All right, everybody, welcome to the show. Uh, welcome, 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 welcome again. You, you know the drill. It's the uh, the Oscars Mafia podcast. Blah, 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 blah. I, I'm George, your host, uh, here with a, a, a one-on-one uh, discussion on the uh, nominations with, uh, with, with, with Jasmine. Hello. Uh, so... <sighs> There's a lot to 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 discuss, um, as I'm sure everybody here already knows. Uh, we did a little bit of discussing on the reactions to the nominations. So if you want to go watch that, they're on the YouTube channel. It's pretty pretty interesting. But uh, we haven't had uh, much of a chance to really sit down and talk about them in depth because we've we've been doing Sundance. And everything, and uh, Jazz was the only one who could join me for this, so uh, here we are. And now, hopefully, I don't have to do ADR again because last time we recorded on uh, Discord, my audio was very glitchy, although my internet connection was not very good. So we'll see how this goes. Yeah, so uh, while it went mostly okay, there were a couple points where the audio did not come through in the processing phase. So I had to um, dub over it with ADR. And uh, those no- moments are pretty noticeable, so I apologize for that. But uh, they are minimal this time around, unlike the last episode. So, yeah. So, I guess without further ado, let's just uh, get into it, right? Yeah. Let's start off, as usual, with live action short film the after invincible night of fortune red white and blue and the wonderful story of henry sugar uh, i've actually seen all these i have only seen henry sugar because that's the one that everybody has seen uh i, I don't actually do okay this is the one for caragor where i have actually seen all of them i almost saw all of the shortlisted films i've seen 11 of the 15 um I um first of all the after is a terrible short <laughs> it's terrible it's netflix i've heard i I've don't heard. entirely know why it's nominated if i'm being super honest um uh the invincible i think is the best made for them all i would love it to win i it won't but I would love it to win. I think it's it's really good. Um, Note of Fortune is fine. It's good. It's fine. I don't really have anything special to say about it, but it's good. Um, Red, White, and Blue was probably nominated because of its subject matter. I mean, it's good, but it was definitely yeah, partly that's nominated why, because of its subject matter. That's why I predicted it. Very timely. Um, and Henry Sugar is good. Um, I don't want him to win, if I'm being super honest. Yeah, I um, not because yeah. I don't want like Wes Anderson to have an Oscar, an Oscar, but I, I think I like a lot of other people have a really kind of mixed feelings on like the big name director thing in this category, because this kind of yeah. isn't what this category is for. This category is for like yeah, and... smaller directors and stuff because we've seen a lot of big name directors get their star in the short categories. Yeah, and. Uh... I um have to take a, a bit of an L here because I I said that uh um Wes Anderson was gonna get uh, shut out here. He was gonna get gate kept, and uh, they didn't. So I, I take the L there. <laughs> I yeah, I, I kind of agree because like I mean, it's not like this is his like he had Bottle Rocket or um. Royal Tenant Bombs, and then this. He's been nominated for Best Director, and he's like potentially going to win for a short film here uh, that he directed. Like, if he produced it, it'd be one thing, but um, yeah, this is just kind of like weird for him to be um, uh for him to be here yeah even if and the short weird. is very good and it's weird because they normally don't love 
like the game director's hair. Yeah, but like, they, as better, they, they also gatekeep. just don't. They, they also just they don't gatekeep. like Petra Mikalar, who has not been nominated as a category twice now. I think. Um, I mean, he's got two Oscars. He'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, he'll be fine. But like, I really don't love big name directors in this category. I mean, so Strange Way of Life was also people. like a lot of people did not like it. So, but the Human Voice people did like. But I mean, I could yeah, kind of see why did, they like, subbed it because it's definitely but... like. But like, um, I would have taken out the after for an avocado pit, which which was another show that I really liked. Um, that was that was good. I'm really sad that I didn't make the cut. I really wanted it to. Um, I personally found as someone who did see eleven of the shorts, this is the category I saw the most of. I thought the shorts were really mediocre this year. <laughs> Just kind of as a whole, I know that you've watched a bunch of them too. I have found them really mediocre. I haven't watched a, as many like yet. I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch them all before uh, predictions. But um, they're really mediocre, and I think a lot of people yeah. have the same thoughts. They're very mediocre this year. They're not like the strongest bunch of shorts this year. So yeah. So I mean, I I guess if this is how Wes Anderson wins, it's gonna be a little bit bittersweet because like. He has one now. He'll have an Oscar, but like it'll be like for a category that is not director or screenplay or picture, yeah. and also is like in a category where like ideally a lot of people should be getting their start. Like this is how like Martin McDonough and uh, Andrea Arnold, for example, like got their start was winning uh, in this category. So yeah, I'll be happy to get an Oscar, but like at what cost? Yes. <laughs> I won, but at what cost? Yeah. Uh, so 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 then there's a documentary short film, uh, the ABCs of book banning, the Barber of Little Rock, Island in Between, the Last Repair Shop, and Nai Nai and Waipo. Uh, this is the category I've actually seen the least nominees in. I have only seen. I've seen ABCs three of these of, now. I've seen the ABCs of book banning, and I just watched the Last Repair Shop, which made me cry. Um, ABC's a book banning is awful. I don't know why it's nominated here. It's awful. No, no, I I can tell you why. It's because uh, well, it's I know why. But like... <laughs> yeah, uh, I I I watched it yesterday. It it's um, I warned you it is awful. It's not very good. Um, so it's just like it doesn't do nearly enough to actually go into why like like why they're doing the book bannings and like it, it leaves out so much context like it acknowledges that like the book books being banned are like have to do with like race and you know lgbtq issues and everything like that but it doesn't like talk about the 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 bigotry that's driving it you know what I mean? It just like it, it just does it. It leaves out a big part of uh, of that, and like I feel like that's important to understand, like why this is happening, and yet you just leave it out. I don't. I don't understand. It would be like if you made a a, a documentary short film about uh um the don't say gay bill and you don't like talk about why Ron DeSantis was pushing for that you know what I'm saying yeah yeah I mean if you like basically what is a powerpoint for like 25 minutes with just the word band on it like then you the book ABC the book bending is like your thing yeah I was a bit more lenient (laughs) on it than you because I don't think it's like like it's like competently made I guess, but like it's just like I don't know if it's competent like that. I don't know if it's competent. Made. It's it's cheap and like it, it's just it's so bare bones. Um, last repair shop is good. <laughs> I cried during the last but, repair shop. I cried probably because uh, I'm also a band. I'm also a band kid. I was a band kid for five years. So oh, I I, I was oh I was also a band kid. Believe me. So like it, it I, I I related to it personally. I I think it's just um. They don't really expand much on it besides like the stories and everything, and like it's, like it it's lit and shot very well. But other than that, I don't necessarily think it's like insanely cinematic. 
uh, that that's uh, the end credit scene where they have all the people Oh, with yeah, the they're playing. with I the like instruments that. like performing. Like I I thought like that was I thought that was great. I like that. What's the other one you've seen? Nai Nai and Waipo. Okay. Which um Sean Wong, director of DD Okay, at Sundance. oh, yeah. Watch out for this guy. This guy's gonna be the next Barry Jenkins, I'm telling you. This guy's gonna be the next Barry Jenkins. Like or <laughs> next uh indie breakout hit because this man dd is like was my favorite movie of sundance and it's my favorite film of the year so far or 2024 so far and 99 wipo is easily my favorite of the three doc shorts i've seen in fact it's my favorite of the shorts that all the shorts that i've seen so far it is so 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 good i hope it wins it probably won't it'll probably lose the abc's of book banning which is gonna make me cry but like it if there was any justice in the world, it would win. Yeah, I've only seen two of them, so I don't really have anything really to say about the, the other three. Yeah, uh, I I know where I can watch the other two. I do too. I just think I need to get around yeah. to them. Yeah, and uh, I'll send you nine nine and wipeout later. <laughs> yeah, the the doc shorts are. I mean, it's also going to be a Disney. Just need to watch. And the doc shorts are really hard because they tend to be probably some of the longest short films because they all usually tend to be close to forty minutes. So, um. They're they're typically a little more difficult to get through, so. But yeah. Uh, animated short film. Uh, we have Letter to a Pig, Ninety Five Senses, Our Uniform, Pachyderma, it's and French. War. So I'm not. Sure uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure. I pronounced. I have my German. My German brain <laughs> kicked in the high gear there. And uh, War is Over, inspired by the music of John and Yoko. Now. I love this category. Where, where, only, where, where I had to take an L in live action short calling uh, where, you know, I incorrectly predicted that Henry Sugar would be snubbed. In this category, I did correctly predict that they would snub Once Upon a Studio. So. Oh, I predicted that. I do like, I like watching the animated short category because they tend to be the shortest. So they're really easy yeah. to binge. I have not watched any of these yet. Um, I watched four. Um, I thought Puma or Smug would get nominated, but I didn't know Letter to a Pig was also a Holocaust film, so that makes sense. Um, I think I had Letter to a Pig in. I didn't. I had Puma, and I think, oh, but I didn't know Letter to a Pig was a uh, was, was also a Holocaust because Puma was too. Um, I've seen mm. four of the five of these. I have not seen Letter to a Pig yet. I'm gonna be mm. honest. I don't know what's winning here. Like at all, I uh, no yeah. clue whatsoever. There's like kind of no I'm, indication. I'm going off of what um Matt, our friend Matt, is going off of. What's I'm saying idea? 95 senses. I did like 95 senses. That was really good. Which which is also like um cool because that would give an Oscar to the director of Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have to note the fact that the director of Napoleon Dynamite. And the director of Under the Skin received Oscar nominations in the same year. So I feel like if like the Disney short had gone in, I think that just would have won by default because it probably would have been one. Well, <laughs> maybe not. Yeah, but, like, probably. It, but it, it like, would have been really let's easy be real. Kind of it didn't ads. get in because it's it's an ad. It, it, it's basically um, yeah. just it's a glorified. But I think if it ad had ad. gone in, I I think like it just would have been one that everyone would have just defaulted to. What was now? Yeah. Um, ninety five senses really good i love the animation i think it's different animation styles for every single part of the story which was really cool um our uniform i'm so happy that i got in i don't think it's the most like inspired story like it's good but it, it's very short and very small but the animation style is so cool it's using like different fabrics as the animation so that it, I, I loved it i'm so happy i got in the french one um Good, not great. Really, it's good. People are a little divided on it, but I liked it. Um, and War is Over is bad. <laughs> I just watched it the other day. It is not good. Not good. Um, it's interesting. It's a very um simplistic War is bad message, by the way. <laughs> That's like the whole message of the movie. It's, war is bad. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. And it has gonna... the stupidest needle drop of all time. Which you can probably imagine what it is. You know, the 
inspired by the music of John and Yoko. I uh, boy, I wonder. Yeah, I know, right? It's... <laughs> uh, uh, if it is uh, imagined by John Lennon, I'm going to uh, laugh my ass off. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not. No, uh, once you kind of start watching, you'll kind of like when you do when the drop happens, like you will be like, this is like the stupidest thing ever. <laughs> I'll have to check that out soon then. Yeah, um, I have no idea what's going on here. I think like anything could win. I, well, I'll just go with 95 senses because I like the idea of uh, <laughs> Jared Hess <laughs> and Jonathan Glazer both winning Academy Awards on the same night. <laughs> oh, man. I hope, that, I hope they put them together at the Academy Award nominees luncheon photo. Like, I need, <laughs> I need to see that. <laughs> That would be so funny. All right. Well, speaking of uh, Jonathan Glazer, um, let's get an international feature. We have Io Capitano from Italy, Perfect Days from Japan, Society of the Snow from Spain, The Teacher's Lounge from Germany, or shall I say, uh, Das Lauerzimmer, <laughs> and The Zone of Interest from the United Kingdom. I've actually um, only seen two of these. I've seen all five. <laughs> I've only seen two. I've seen uh, Perfect Days, which I think everyone was predicting for the stub because it basically turned up nowhere in these curses. Yeah. And Zone of Interest. So um, I need to get around to The Old Capitano, Society of the Snow, which is on Netflix, and The Teacher's Lounge, which a lot of people didn't have getting in because the ending is apparently like really weird or something. I didn't have it because... It just wasn't showing up because I saw the movie a long, a while back, like a couple months back. And I, and I was like, this can get nominated. It really can. And like, because like, it, it's a really like interesting, like build up film. And like the screenplay is really strong. It's a, it's a really good movie. I thought, um, but it just hadn't really shown up. It got on the long list at BAFTA, but other than that, it really didn't. Anyway, it wasn't nominated at BAFTA, obviously. It also didn't get a Golden Globe nomination, didn't get a Critics' Choice nomination. The thing I think that got it in, though, Sony Pictures Classics. Yo, yeah, that's, what, that's why my friend, that's why I predicted it, because my friend told me that Sony Pictures Classics, and they usually get in like a movie a year at least, so. Yeah. Um, get. Eo Capitano out. That movie is hella mid. <laughs> Get Society of the Snow out. That movie is also hella mid. Uh, <laughs> Perfect Days. Thank goodness that got in. Uh, the Teacher's Lounge is a great movie. I, I like that. And The Zone of Interest. Um, it is I, winning. I just, like, obviously. Is, <laughs> and it deserves it. I just watched that on yeah, Friday. Really, yeah. And uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> it's basically this movie. Zone of Interest. Yeah, and people have already started. They've already started the thing. What if Zone of Interest people vote for Zone of Interest in Picture, but vote for Society of Southern Natural? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's not happening. That has never happened in this category. <laughs> ever, 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 ever. <laughs> I was going to be a really small note, sorry about Doc Short, but I just remembered. I, I think it's really interesting because you know one of the directors, Sheila Nevins, you know who well, like the things that she's like like been a part of, right? Um I'm not familiar. Cause she's executive produced a whole lot of like like a bunch of really like she executive produced like some really big movies, like Citizen Four. And she actually executive produced like the Eternal Memory. So I was very shocked that ABC is a book that is so mid and so bad considering all of the documentaries interesting that she's like been a part of interesting she apparently has taken nothing away from any of it okay continue i just i just remembered that okay then <laughs> um yeah, but that that's not fucking happening. Like, there's no like I would bet money that they do not even consider anything that is not the zone of interest. Like, God, the only I, thing that co that would have done it is if France had submitted Anatomy of a Fall instead. 
Yeah, because then that would be that would be an actual race. That'd be an actual race. Oh, I, I to be honest, based on like what anatomy is one, I think it'd be a slam dunk for anatomy of a false though. I think it'd be a fun battle for to like kind of see. But um, I mean, the fact that anatomy fun, got though. best film at BAFTA, the top category, and even ahead of the zone of interest, I was like, yeah, no, that would have been a slam dunk. I'm happy that like Zone is here because I think I was winning at least one award of the night, which I really like. Yeah, um, I really like Anatomy. I just like Zone. So. I'm sure we watch Anatomy. Uh, interesting that Fallen Leaves didn't get in here. Just like the Globe is really liking it. I um, took that out, and the reason I ended up doing it, I remember the fact that it was movie. Oh, <laughs> and. <laughs> Decision to leave. They also ha- they also was movie, and I was like, "Fuck." <laughs> I mean, I don't think it was just because movie. Like, I mean, also like I I mean I I'm not saying that it wasn't, but also because like it, it's just like is movie really like strong enough to f- fully handle that campaign that they couldn't get that movie in when it got everything. I mean, like, I also just don't... only has Golden Globe. I mean, I also don't think the Academy just cares for like. <laughs> I think like the Academy is having they just don't care for him. Which is really I mean, but Fallen Leaves is, is is a former nominee to Curse Mucky. I I, I I guess it, they just didn't care as much about it. That being said, I would happily take it over Eo Capitano or Society of the Snow because what the fuck are they doing here? I didn't love Fallen Leaves. It like wasn't kind of my my brand of uh humor, like the the deadpan of it all. Not really my thing. It was good though, and I liked the lead actress, Alma Poitzi. Liked her nomina- I liked her nomination. Really also inspired. Need, like, also need to like point out the, the the absolute irony of the fact that France decided to choose the taste of things ahead of Anatomy of a Fall. Anatomy of a Fall gets five nominations. Taste of Things is shut out. <laughs> L O fucking L. <laughs> That's uh, it's what I call a good riddance there, and also like I mean I I I really think that like they need to just change these rules. Like, mean, the, yeah, the, <laughs> the one submission per country rule is so stupid. I like I, I get that you like don't want to have like five movies from France in there, but like. Why not just make it like the acting categories where like in the acting categories you're banned from being nominated twice in the same category. Mm. So like you can't do Margot Robbie and What's Upon Time in Hollywood and Margot Robbie and Bombshell both in supporting actress. I mean I think the international feature category has like a whole spew of just like issues. But like with this one, just take that role and actor just say, okay, you don't have to submit a movie, but you can't nominate both Anatomy of a Fall and The Taste of Things. You have to pick one. And considering yeah. how well Anatomy of a Fall did overall, I think we know what they would pick. <laughs> um, yeah, I think international category has like also a lot of a lot of other issues, including the fact that it is insanely Eurocentric, which is very unfortunate. Yeah, um, four yeah. of these films, two years in a row are European. And really, it's four and a half, because even though Perfect Days was submitted by Japan, like, it's directed by a German. <laughs> like, it's just, like, really, like, unfortunate that, like, how, like, like, like African countries aren't, like, selected a lot, or, like, um... Yeah, the last time an African film, I think, was nominated was The Man Who Sold His Skin, which was Tunisia. Uh, yeah. Then, I mean, and African films know. have won here too. Like, there's been African countries I've submitted films that have won. So, yeah, I mean, shout out to Lunana. Yeah, the classroom. <laughs> there was a very concerted effort behind that film. I just love that nomination so yeah. much. It's but so even if it nominated. didn't get in, we would have still only had three out of five European because yeah. that probably would have put a hero in. Yeah, I'm like looking at it. It's just, it's so 
Eurocentric. Like it's like really yeah. it's like really sad yeah. actually. I think speaking of uh, uh, Iran, it's been a long time since one of their submissions has been uh, nominated. 2015 and had, they uh, they've had a lot of uh, nominations here too. 2015 Iran. had Jordan and Colombia. Um, yeah, it's normally just like one, like at most it's, one it's, or two. Yeah, it's one or two countries. Because 2016 was Iran and Australia, I think. Yeah. Um, 2017 was Chile and Lebanon. Lebanon. Yeah, I'm like looking. 2018 was actually two out of five European because they had Roma, Mexico, and Japan and Lebanon. Yeah. Like, it's just so, it's just like, uh, Israel, Peru, Japan, Israel, Israel, Kazakhstan, Russia, Europe, um, Algeria. So the last, yeah, so South Africa went in 2005. That's the last time an African film won. Okay. Yeah, basically. And then they are actually nominated in two thousand and four as well. But yeah, yeah, so it's, like, it's, yeah, it's it's very, very, very Eurocentric. You can, really I mean, yeah, you can get nominated as an African film or as a Latin American film, but most of the nominees are from Europe or Asia. Yeah, it's just really unfortunate. It's kind of like an issue with the the category. Like the category has a lot of issues, but this is kind of one yeah. Of the I mean, main ones. It's kind of a common theme with the with the academies that they're all like yeah, they're very white, but they're very Western. As well. Yeah, very yeah, very European. I assume Europe makes a big, big part, kind of international part of it. A I'm bit. also gonna say, too, that this is kind of a common theme for today, or not today. These nominations, there's a lot of German representation with these, um, which I'm, I'm not gonna claim is like necessarily like this big accomplishment, right? But it's interesting to note. At least in this category, two films by German directors and two German language films. And they aren't the same films. <laughs> I think someone pointed out just like the confusing dynamics of all of these films and what languages they're in and what countries they're from and like who they're directed by. It's like very confusing. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> like, the dynamics, it's very, it's very confusing and really funny. And even like Io Capitano, that's Italy because Matteo Garone, but that's mostly in French. Is it really? Yeah, because okay, so I guess I guess it technically is also an African film because it's about African, um, it's about Senegalese uh, teenagers who are trying okay. to uh, immigrate to Italy. Oh, my migrants, uh, migrant African. Yeah, so is it, what's in? Actually, hold on. Let me look up the exact languages because I think it's. I said it was in French, but I don't oh, know if it's actually. Mostly it is French. in French and a language spoken by the Wallace people of Western Africa of Geno Gambia. The Wallace language is the other language it's in. Yeah, yeah, that's so. what I'm saying on IMDb. Yeah, it's like Perfect so, Days. It's like a Japanese film directed by like a German director. Yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of issues with the international feature category. I kind of don't know how they, like, kind of the. the I think the there's just European truly no thing. way, like, no way it's no way to yeah. enforce it. Yeah. Uh, because you know you you can have a, a film from from Canada directed by someone who speaks English, but it's in French, so I don't know. Or it could be in any language, because I know a long... I don't know when they did, but they did drop the... The movie needs to be in the official language of the country, because I do think that used to be a rule a while ago, but they but they dropped it. So yeah. It's kind of why, like, the United Kingdom. In Australia, like a couple years ago. Yeah. So. And there's also countries, too, like South Africa like, has English as an official language, and so does India, and yeah, it just gets confusing. Yeah. Uh, okay, best uh, documentary, <laughs> which uh, insane. Uh, Bobby Wine, 
the people's president, eternal memory, four daughters, to kill a tiger, and 20 days and marry you, Paul. This is my proudest category of predicting. I didn't even go for like five for five, but four for five. And I'm very I proud got, of predicting got, this category. I got two for five. I should have put Bobby Wine in. I really should have, because I had a feeling that that could get in. But I was kind of sticking with this idea that like there needs to be at least two Indie Spirit nominees. Oh my and god. The, the only two Indie Spirit nominees who were that were even shortlisted were Four Daughters and Going to Mars and Nikki Giovanni Project. Obviously Four Daughters got in, but um going going to Mars is uh, morbed, if you will. Uh also speaking of getting morbed, beyond Utopia. <laughs> I'm very shocked that I also speaking I of know, being morbed, I American know what Symphony. Happened. Also, also speaking of being morbed, still a Michael J. Fox movie. I warned everyone. Oh, like, I have told me, I, so did I. I, I told like, everyone that they weren't getting in after I looked at all of the stats of the past like twenty they years. They don't like celebrity documentaries. Like they don't. They're very, very particularly um, after singers. Because there's a handful yeah. of, of but like, f- like famous people that have gone documented. Yeah, like RBG, but she's a Supreme Court justice. Yeah, but like very, 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 very specifically actor singer docs, like a bunch have gone shortlisted. Um, but all the music, like like Billie Eilish, a couple of years ago, had one. Mm-hmm. Uh, um. Yeah, there was a it was shortlisted. Show. It was shortlisted. Didn't get it. Billie Eilish is like one of like the biggest singers right now. Um, well, you be was, my neighbor. The, yeah, there was a documentary on the Dixie Chicks back in two thousand and six that didn't get in. Um, Jane. A, um, one. Life on itself. Agnes, the Roger Ebert. The Roger Ebert documentary. Agnes Varda, Philip Glass, um, Roger Ebert, Faces, Places, uh, Jane, Julia. Hallelujah, let a coin store. No, Faces Places got in. Uh, oh, yeah, no, that was one that got in. Uh, Jane was about Jane Goodall, did not get in. Julia did not get in. J Dream did not get in. Yeah. Also getting sound editing. was no, I don't know what else it got. Yeah. Amy was like the last one. To yeah, get Amy's in. the last one, and that one, and that was after Amy Winehouse had died. The other one was a documentary about. Tupac. I don't know what it's about, but that was also after he died. So, mm. so uh, apparently you have to be dead. Yeah, you have to be dead. <laughs> which is so, which is, which is so morbid, but also flies in the face of like, why didn't they nominate Mister Rogers then? Why didn't they nominate Moon Age Daydream then? Um. Yeah, Tupac to uh, two. Tupac Resurrection. What? That movie. <laughs> uh, oh, it was nominated. I thought it was. But that was nominated. Um, well, the life and death of Robert of Robert Tupac. And yeah, so that's like the two since like the short list like began in like two thousand and three. Like they don't care for actor singer talk. They just don't like him. They don't really, you know, really they, don't you care. know what you know what they do like political docs, political figures. They Very love political them. documentaries. They love that, that's them. why Ruth Bader that's why RBG gets in. That's why I predicted that is the stat I used to predict Bobby Wine the People's President because it's a political doc. I, I should have. I should I, I should have done that. I and definitely the should have done that. Loves political docs, political figures. There are so many documentaries about political figures, about politics. Um, also environmentalism. Also, they get all get documentary mentions. So, um, um, happy the four daughters are going. That is a very good documentary. It's one of the best docs ever. Very good. Yeah. Um, I was a little. And I called that one early, like when it premiered. I was a little afraid that was going to miss because I just didn't feel like that was like four daughters. Not. Nah, it was it, it. I mean, it won Gotham, and it got Indie Spirit, it got Cinema Eye, and IDA. Okay. Did it get IDA? I don't know. Um, point is, that movie really did show, and it won the the um camera door mm-hmm. at uh. Oh, or, I, I can. I guess it's the Golden Eye at uh, at Cannes. 
um I, I called that one early. Like once that movie premiered at Cannes and I saw the reviews it got, I was like, yeah, that's getting nominated for documentary. You, I remember Uh, you telling me about this when, like, over the summer, we were talking about, like, doc feature contenders. I remember you telling me about that. Yeah. Very distinctly, actually. Um, Eternal Memory, I saw a while ago, and I just kept it in. If I'm being super honest, I had kind of no Mm motivation for it, but it began. And Tequila yeah Tiger was a surprise. That was, I think, definitely the surprise. I don't know anyone yeah who knows i wasn't it. even <laughs> that wasn't even in my top 10 Um, I need to watch. I do have access to it because it is a Canadian documentary, so I do have access to it. So, i think it was also malaysia's submission to the oscars for international okay, so okay. i think three or four of these are actually a country's official submission because Oh yeah, yeah. four daughters is tunisia 20 days is ukraine and uh i think eternal memory is actually no actually no i don't know about eternal memory because i think chile did the settlers Yeah, I don't think that this was. i think I don't think this was Chile's uh, submission. yeah okay so it might be three and i i think bobby wine is primarily in english um Yeah, Wikipedia says that it's in English. uh so um congratulations 20 days in mary Uh, yeah, you congratulations paul in Twitter's Mario that Pool. You're that is happy sweeping to watch. <laughs> that, that that is like lock 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 Yeah, because I was gonna say, like, if like still had managed to get in, it would have won. It absolutely would have won. It would have definitely been no question because people definitely like it. It's about someone that like the Academy that probably members really like because he's in a lot of movies that they like. But uh, I kind of don't know what else could win from here. I'm being super honest. Uh, Yeah, so. I guess four daughters I would put second because that's like been super high profile and is like kind of important, though you could say Bobby Wine because it's apparently in English. So, Um, yeah, I'm happy that 20 Days of Mary Paul is uh, gonna win. I think it's the uh, best documentary over the year, so I can't I'm disagree. I'm very happy that it's winning. So, okay, animated. Animated feature. This fucked up all of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say I'll, some people did see this coming. Uh, the Boy in the Heron, Elemental, Nimona, Robot Dreams, and Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. Also, I have Um, to say, To Kill a Tiger got literally, they got nothing in terms of like precursors. Absolutely yeah. nothing. Yeah. But yeah, I think everyone I know went four for five in animated. <laughs> A lot. There were a lot of people who said, like, Robot Dreams, you know, it's going to win that the Indie uh, Annie Award. Like, you know, I would not say no. Like, there were there were people who were talking about it, potentially getting in over uh, Nimona or what it actually did get over Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I feel like more people had it in over them. If they had, See, like, something in see, that that's wasn't the despised. thing, though. I, I, I had the right... the right um vibe on this and 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 i say this because not, not to brag but because it's uh, i um nimona is was netflix's push Yeah, just like like, yeah. through it through it also got um the most nominations at the annies which is definitely not something that's like worth brushing under the rug Yeah. and uh i, I mean look th there was just no way that they were gonna like leapfrog a chicken run ahead of it obviously because like they they kind of dumped chicken run for nimona I mean, good decision. and teenage mutant ninja turtles it definitely had enough to get in i i, I i'm not even totally sure like why it missed I'm other also than really like not sure why I missed. <laughs> I like you could say it's like eh, well you don't really like Ninja Turtles, but it's like I don't really buy that argument though because like Spider Man's in here and um a movie about Barbie dolls is nominated for Best Picture, so I I I don't know like I don't really buy the fact that it's like too kiddie. I think what happened what probably happened is like Robot Dreams just barely 
uh, got enough votes to get it. That would be my it. guess. I would like actually like. I think of every single category. I would really like to see the votes for this one. I really want to see how close it was because I really want to put it. Yeah, be pretty close. Um, I had spent like all of kind of the coming weeks leading up to nominations, but the five for this was too easy, <laughs> and that something was gonna miss, which. I also thought about another category that we also that also took us by surprise, but I have I, a feeling I know what you're thinking of. Yeah, it was the category that literally shocked Absol. But I don't know, and I I haven't seen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because I have no interest in this. As I'm being super honest, but I always had this gut feeling that it was going to miss, and I just can never predict myself to take out Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because because I guess like what else could you have done like Chicken Run. No, because I thought I was like I was like, oh, it'd be really cool if Robot Dreams got in. I didn't think enough people would see Robot Dreams. If I'm being super honest, I'm I didn't that either. I that's why I didn't predict it. I didn't have the balls to predict it because I was like, I don't know. If I, enough people I mean, also see like, it. what else were you gonna do besides Robot Dreams? Were we gonna do like Chicken Run or Suzume or something like that? I know, like, like I know someone who I know a couple people who went chicken run if they really just wanted to really like Hardman. Brett. <laughs> well, they definitely could have happened. Um, it was probably set. It was probably like seven. Uh, since the was never happening, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't think that I know people don't want to hear it. It was a really cool I mean, Globe nomination. Th- like, the thing really about cool. thing about chick, or I guess you could have done Mario if you really wanted to. Um, but yeah, the love they have for illumination, yeah. <laughs> and uh, wish was obviously like uh, wish on, was never uh, happening. The second wish it, was on Pluto. Um, the second it missed the original song front list, it was never happening. Like, and they got blanked at the Emmys. Like, no blanked. care for it. No care for um, it. Yeah, I mean. I don't know. I, I guess Chicken Run got BAFTA, but that's British, so I, I didn't really care about I was going to say, I didn't pay any attention. And only four slots. Which I, still puzzles me. But they only Yeah, that's, that's weird. Just a few years ago, it was only three. Uh, yeah, I, I, paid never... chi- I paid Chicken Run no kind of attention to BAFTA, because I was like, it's British. Yeah. It's obviously going to get in, like... <laughs> yeah, it's British. It doesn't matter. Um, I, 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 I do... Th- because I, I, I did see leading up to the nominations, a lot of people saying, "Ooh, Elemental Miss Feature at the Annies could that miss?" That's so many people trying. And, and the, my, my thing about that was like, thing. Over the Moon missed more than just the Annie nomination, and it still got nominated. And like, I'm so, sorry, like it, it missing anime like, like feature at the Annies doesn't surprise. I mean, I know I think it's one of the only. Pixar it's movie. only the second Pixar film to miss there after, I think after Lightyear. Lightyear. But yeah, like, after Lightyear. But like honestly, can like I'm like not super, super, super shocked. The Annie's have a really mixed history with like Disney and Pixar in general. Um, especially because it is like the animation people. Um, but amongst the entire academy who like probably mostly have kids and have all seen Elemental because like, like they were gonna vote for that. Watch, yeah. They were gonna watch it, like. If it yeah. was just like the animated branch, you could maybe make an argument that maybe they go for something else over elemental, but not when it's the entire academy, in my opinion. Yeah. If it were just the branch, I could have maybe seen them do that. And I think they definitely would have done I think Robot Dreams would have definitely have happened if it oh, was yeah, just the animation well, yeah, branch. Yeah. yeah. Like you could have maybe seen like then say, okay, we're gonna do chicken run or we're gonna do Suzume, but the Annies didn't even nominate Chicken Run anywhere, I don't think. <laughs> like, it could have gotten in their indie category, and it just didn't. Yeah. So, I mean, ultimately, uh, Robot Dreams is a... Really inspired nomination. I thought that was... Yeah. I need cool. to see I it. So I need to see it. I don't I know when Robot it, Dreams is single-handedly the hardest movie to currently find, because it's, like, nowhere. Yeah. I, I, and I want to see it, because it looks good. And I, I think you'll yeah. like it. I think Brett's gonna love it. it like, oh, Brett! Like, yeah, it is yeah. such a Brett movie. That looks very Brett core. 
But yeah, I'm really lucky to have actually watched this. I watched this at Sif. I almost skipped it because I was late because I got the times mixed up. And I'm so glad that I turned up to watch it. It's so good. It's such a sweet little movie. Um, and Spider-Man? Neon has it. So Spider-Man? Neon had a really good year. I yeah, Spider-Man I'd probably say Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Because I think Boy in the Heron missed Ace, I believe. It did. And there's a big, and there's a big stat with Ace and uh, yeah. Animated, I believe. Though they are both on the same playing field because th- th- this is both their only nomination. Yeah. So, uh, um, we'll 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 get to my frustrations with with <laughs> one of those categories that they both I missed. Think I, I think I know. What you're I <laughs> God, I I. Oh man. Well, well, we're gonna get to that in a couple categories. Um, Spider Verse is probably winning. I I think I think Boy and the Heron should win, but. Uh, uh, I would I, give it to I, Spider-Man. It's my favorite movie of 2023, but I'd be really happy if Boy in the Heron won. I think it'd be really cool if another like, yeah. anime film. Well, I mean, Miyazaki okay. is like leg- a legend. Yeah. And like, when you, re- when you really sit down and think about it, it's like kind of insane that he only has one. It and is. It's, it's, for, it's for the film he made that's like considered his magnum opus, but yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, I think um, he'll win at least one more Oscar. Well, <laughs> if, he gets another, that, if he gets to another movie, if he if he gets to another film, if yeah. he gets to another movie, like, the man's dying. really <laughs> fucking old. <laughs> um, I I have a feeling one day it might get to the point where it's kind of like a Stanley Kubrick handing off AI artificial intelligence to Steven Spielberg because he just like isn't able to do it. Granted, Kubrick didn't do that because he was dying it, it was because like he he just didn't know what to do with the material uh but yeah i feel like like something like that might happen i think if he manages to make another movie i think if he manages to make a final definitive movie because i know everyone thought boy in the Heron was gonna make his last movie and he was like no i'm gonna keep working till i die basically he, um clint eastwood of anime <laughs> Just, I think because... if he does make like a final definitive film, I think he'll win. Or I think not to be morbid, I think if he makes a movie and I think if he dies, I think he'll win. I'm being yeah. Not to be morbid, but like I'm not to say he'll win just because he died. He dies, but like I think if he dies and he makes a movie. yeah, maybe. Assuming he makes another one, I think he'll win at least another Oscar at some point, hopefully. <laughs> <clears throat> though considering All how right. long Boy in the Heron took to come out I'm not sure so we'll see original song The Fire Inside from Flamin' Hot good job Dianne Warren <laughs> good Harvey. job <laughs> it never went away from American Symphony um Wajaji a song from my a song for my people from Killers of the Flower Moon and what was I made for from Barbie? Uh, Thank God the Rustin song didn't get in because it was yeah, awful. That was it was not great. It is I, a little everyone over though because I think everyone predicted it. <laughs> everyone just thought it was gonna get. I mean, it got the. the nomin- it did get Globe, and it it would have kind of matched with a later nomination, but thank God it didn't get it. Um. The Killers of the Flower Moon song. That's an inspired nomination. <laughs> it is. I'm kind of. I'm still kind of shocked that it got in, in part because of confusing. two of two major snubs that yeah, were dealt. Yeah, it's a little confusing. That were, dealt, that were dealt to Killers, but also because, also because of the song itself. Which I need to re listen to it because it's the song from like the end. Like the it's the end credits. It's the song that they're playing in the final shot, and it bleeds into the end credits. Which is it's an inspired choice, as you said, but like it's not a song that's really that it's not really a traditional song. I would like to like, know voters. It's not a song that's like super easy to listen to on its own. I would like to know voters' decisions for picking this, like genuinely. I, I do as well. And like and, and uh, Robbie Robertson is not credited here uh so it can't be because of that 
I, 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 cause I mean, it's a song. I don't know how to describe it. It's like, it's a very mm -hmm. traditional Osage song that as, as I understand it. And it's really interesting on how they're going to perform this at the Oscars. I think it'd be really cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm not really sure what they're going to do. Um, it's just, it's not really a song that one would like listen to. So like for that reason, I I really wasn't sure that they were actually gonna gonna go for it. I'm almost kind of surprised they made the short list, because like, like at least with like this is a life last year, like that was like a like a more of a song in the traditional sense. Like you could mm -hmm. listen to it and be like, oh yeah, this is like you know it's a song. You've got David Byrne, you've got Mitski singing, and you know there's a bunch of in uh, you know instrumentation going on. With this one, it, it's it's like. They're singing. There's a beat, so it's definitely a song. But it's not. It's it's not a song. It's, it's not something you think of when you think yeah. of a song. Yeah. yeah. Um. I'm listening to snippets of it. It's definitely. It is a very inspired nomination. It is not something I personally would have picked, but I think it is a very uh, inspiring nomination. And I'm I'm happy it got nominated. Um. And yeah. I'm not unhappy that I got nominated. So. Very inspiring. Uh, interesting to I, see them um, perform it at the Oscars. So now, also, Fire Inside surprisingly above. Surprisingly, like not the worst song that Diane Warren has had nominated. I don't like it. I I think it's good. I think it's, it's better than last year's because it's all I mean, dead awful. That's I mean, not. That's. I mean, that's. that's I know the bar. Much. I know the bar is the floor, but like. It's not even the floor. It's below the basement. And then uh, I haven't heard it. Never went away from American. Film. It's even a good I've song. Seen the, I've seen the movie. I, I, I assume it's like the credit song. So it's. I, I, I haven't seen the film, but I've heard the song. It's good. Um, now between the two Barbies. Um, I don't like that. I don't love it. Just kind. I don't really like that. It's not gonna do. I'm not really sure what which one. Like, I mean, okay. After the Golden Globes, I was like, okay, I guess they're just gonna go down by what was I made for. But then Critics Choice decided, no, we're gonna go with I'm Just Ken. No, but considering critics voted, I'm not really not shocked. Um, <laughs> okay, but Jasmine, these people are not critics. Let's be real. Oh, I know, but like, I'm kind of not shocked that they went from Just Ken. If I'm being super honest, I'm not that shocked either. It's just, it's just like. They kind of made it confusing. I, I, um... I really, I don't even think that Sean should be nominated. If I'm being super honest, I think it is a cool scene in the movie. I don't love it as like a song, if that makes sense. Like, I mean, considering how terrible a lot of the nominees in original song are, and there's a lot I mean, of bad ones. Like, I mean, it's a good in comparison to like the fire inside, but like, it's not something that I like listen to outside of Barbie. Or when it appears like on my TikTok, um, I personally actually I mean, really I mean, would have liked uh, "Dance the Night," which I like significantly better. <laughs> being honest, some people Sorry, thought that was going to happen. Some, some people really thought that "Dance the Night" was going to get in over "I'm Just Ken," which I never understood. I at all. want Oscar nominee Dua Lipa. I think she wrote it, so like, I want Oscar nominee Dua Lipa. Also, well, would have been a really fun. Song. They they shouldn't have changed the rules to to limit it only to two because if they if if they hadn't done that, then she would be in. No, because then I we, people would have bet so three Barbie songs would have gone in the original song. So like the sacrifice. I mean, you're probably you're probably right. You're probably right. <laughs> like, I don't I think love Barbie. Three songs. I love Barbie. I don't need it to get three song nominees. <laughs> I don't either. But yeah, if it had been no limit, they it would have gone three. I think also just would have gone in. But. I'm still just gonna go. What was I made for? Personally, I'll probably. I, I guess I'll probably say that as well. I'm I keep going for it. <laughs> I admittedly still would prefer. I'm just Ken, though. I don't love. I. I don't get the hype behind. I'm just Ken. Look, I just look. This category just sucks so much, and the song is like really fun, <laughs> and it's like look. If you're going to nominate Diane Warren every year, give me a song that's like, you know, kind of in an inspired choice. Like, it's a comedic song in a, in a way. The irony of the song sung by the dude winning for Barbie. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go well, I mean, clear, clearly, according to some people, that's exactly that's exactly what happened. What what would happen? Uh, uh, that, that's yeah, a, I was gonna keep going. I was gonna keep going. Joke. What was I made I'll, for? I'll probably just I'll I'll probably keep going with what what was I made for? But like I I, I do hope for I'm just Ken. Songs was really hard because it has like no precursors. So it's it has, I like, mean it wasn't that hard last year to be honest. No, but when it is like kind of not super super obvious, but it's not like obviously like, it's gonna be like let it go from that person. It's it's hard yeah or not like, to not to or there's no like time no to die. there's like no precursors for this and there's no industry precursors either like we have golden globe that's not industry we have critics choice that's not industry <laughs> so unless you want to count society composers and lyricists which like kind of like and like the gold like the grammys which are like this weekend but they're not like the grammys or the grammys are, like, or whatever like, i mean look Dua Lipa is big at the grammys and she didn't get in here so i don't know so so i'm pretty sure uh what was I made for? It's been I won a couple Grammys this weekend, so yeah, maybe I'm, I'm just Ken Will as well. So I don't know. I was gonna go with what was I made for is on the song and it's kind of moment in, in the movie and like Billy Eilish, probably. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll just say that too. So, like, if she wins, she's gonna have like two Oscars before like twenty thirty, which is like insane. <laughs> All right, well, um, let's move on to a, a category that will not be as easy to determine the winner. Or should, it's not as hard, I should say, but also one that really pissed me off. And pissed everybody off. Original score. Uh, American Fiction. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I told everyone that they were just, just going to name check John Williams. He has 54 domains. Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, Poor Things. Let me tell you right now, now that you say that, not only am I predicting John Williams every time he has a score, in my early predictions, every time I hear he has a score, I am putting him at number one until a clear frontrunner emerges. Because this man, it doesn't matter how bad the movie is, how bad the score is, he keeps getting in, and it's annoying. I Over told better people. scores, like Spider-Verse and The Zone of Interest. <laughs> it's so not. annoying. People did not think that he was just going to be name checked, and I said he's going to meet the dude has fifty three nominations. He's getting name checked, and 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 that's you just have to predict that from now on. That's why I said every time in my early predictions, I hear he has a score. I'm putting him at number one until a front runner emerges. Yeah, because he just keeps getting in. Made, like, I have to treat him like Diane Warren now. Yeah, I mean, I think he made a score that actually doesn't sound like every single other score. <laughs> Like all of his scores kind of sound the same. I mean, they definitely do. I mean, they do now. Yeah, they do. They now. do they now. It's just same. it's so it's so frustrating because like Spider Verse has a great has a really great score, and it it's it, in Zone of Interest has a awesome like as a really it's sparingly used, which I guess why it is why it wasn't nominated. I was gonna say I will say in defense of that one, I do think part of the big part of the reason was that it is so short. It is a very and, but like it has like one of the most unique sounding scores in any film ever. And, I mean, and yeah, I love it for... because they they suck John Williams' cock so much they have to put him in. I'm sorry. <sighs> to be fair, I even without Indiana Jones, I actually don't. I actually still think so. That it's just really I think if Indiana oh, Jones wasn't here. I think either Spider Man or uh... I don't think it, I don't think it would have been done about this. So. Like Spider Man uh, or Boy in the Heron, maybe. Yeah, Boy in the Heron could have been here as well. Past Lives that wasn't even shortlisted, but that could have been here. Is an interesting pick. I am not going to levy any any um, hate against American Fiction. My friend uh, just because watched it. That score American is good. My friend just watched American Fiction today and he came back and came into our group show. I was like, so American Fiction was really good, but I don't understand the score nomination. <laughs> no, the score kind of makes sense because like like when you listen to it on its own at least, it, it actually is like a very like okay. I do not remember the score. kind of interesting <laughs> score. Uh, I have Ludwig hate... Gordonson, congratulations on your my hate anyway. my hate in this category is going all towards Indiana Jones. Yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, one of my one of my Discord servers a couple like like a year or two ago, we did like a a, a contest to like guess the score like the score and everything, and you can always tell John and Williams score because they all sound the same. <laughs> Sorry, John uh, Williams. 
my god. Yeah. Oh, my god. <laughs> Again, every time in my early predictions, I hear he has a score. He's going at number one until there's a, until there's a firm runner. Because he's just always in. He's just always in. I have to treat him like Diane Warren now. <sighs> Anyway, congratulations, Lubig, on your second yeah, Oscar. Um, Good job. On a more positive note, Jerskin Fendrix. Oh, I'm so happy about it. I know a couple people were a little worried that that one get in. I don't understand that at all. Um, so glad that that got in. Great score. Jerskin Fendrix. I'm looking up how old he is because I think he's super young. He's 29. 20 Damn. Yeah, according to Google. Oh, He's yeah. like the youngest score nominee in in several years, and yeah, we love that one. He comes from the same music scene as Black Country and New Road and Black oh, okay. Bitty, for okay. people who you know are interested in those bands. And he created one of the coolest, most unique scores of the year. That just happens to be attached to a Best Picture nominee, and that's awesome. I love that he's that he's that he is nominated. Oh, good, good um, composer. I hope he keeps doing more good work. Mm-hmm. And uh, Robbie Robertson also, I think, is R. the R. first R. posthumous nomination here since... Um, well, now I, I can't remember the stat I heard on Next Best Picture, and I can't remember it. Uh, Going back, it's been a really long time. <laughs> like, a really long time. Wow, it's been like since the nineties since there's been a post hominous nomination here. Wow. That's a really long time. That that is a long time. Nineteen seventy six was the last time it happened. Oh wow. For Bernard Herman for Obsession and Taxi Ah, uh, yeah, that that was the one now. There's yeah, only been, that's... there's only been six total. Inter- interesting, interesting though that it was since Taxi Driver because that's also a Martin Scorsese film and yeah. the first Martin Scorsese film to receive a Best Picture nomination. So, Martin Scorsese, what are you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, someone joked on Next Best Picture. I don't remember who, but said, uh, "If you if you score a Martin Scorsese film, you better watch out." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, it hasn't happened since like. Very not not very common in this category, so very deserved though. Right. It, is very, it is a very good score. Well, so. Let's move on to visual effects before I rant about John Williams again. <laughs> uh, the creator category, by the way, the creator Godzilla minus one, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part One. It's not part called Part One anymore. They changed the title, and uh, Napoleon. <laughs> I hate that um, we all took Godzilla predictions because it showed up nowhere. I, yeah, I also hate that. I should, I should have just kept it in as a whole prediction. Should have just kept it yeah. in. Yeah, I probably also should have put Napoleon in because I did. Did it make visual effects at BAFTA? I was a little confused at it. It, I didn't, I didn't realize the VFX of like a. It's because of the oh, horses falling through. Oh, the it, ice. Did, it did actually. It did. Yeah. Get me okay. I should have been a clue. I should have. Oh, I should have. I should have predicted it because it got that and then got supporting visual effects. Did Mission Impossible get anywhere? Visual effects society. Yeah. Mission Impossible was a little bit. Of Mission Impossible got BAFTA. Okay. It's it interesting it because BAFTA. it's the first film in that entire series that's ever gotten any Oscar nominations. I want to got VES. Oh, damn it. And like, it's um. It's kind of having now seen it because I just caught up with it last night. I I know I'm very I I am Patrick Starr in this. I still need to watch it. I haven't seen any of the Mission Impossible movies. <laughs> it's kind of weird. It's like the third best movie in the in the series, third or fourth. Um, that said, it actually does make a lot of sense why because uh, the train sequence is all sound and visual effects. I like, think it was going to get nominated because like none of the other movies got nominated, and they well, you know, you know what I think. Franchises, you like, know what I think it is. No- they don't nominate them; they just don't care about. Them. You like, know what I think it is. I think it's the fact that uh, I think it's residual love from Top Gun Maverick. Because mm. uh, 
a lot of these uh, crew members, I think specifically in sound, they're a lot of the same crew. Mm, okay. And also, I mean, obviously there's the Tom Cruise connection and the Christopher McQuarrie connection. So, um... Oh, uh, shout out to the dude who got three nominations in this category, <laughs> by the way. Shout three? out to him. Yeah, Neil Corbal. Corbal oh my god. Three nominations in this category. Good the lord. Creator, Mission Impossible, Napoleon. Go, good, good for him. You might win one of them, too. <laughs> I think it's really interesting that now um, this is our lineup. What the fuck is winning? Yeah, good question. <laughs> I think everyone's like, I... so It's like four things missed, which I bet missed somewhere in the... In, in, in Visual the... effects society. And everyone was like... I yeah, I I, 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 I had a feeling that I was gonna miss. It was just gonna be kind of it, like the shape. I know. Of water. I sh- I know. I shouldn't have predicted it. But like now that like poor things isn't here because poor things had been here, for example, I would have gone with poor things. So that's picture. yeah. I probably would have too. What's winning here? <laughs> like I I'm still gonna say the creator like, because it's kind of an argument for like, like I don't know about all of oh, them. I, I, I Godzilla minus one is happy to be here. Um. Well, you. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to be I. Most happy to be here. Mission Impossible and Napoleon have nominations, multiple nominations outside of their category. Um, yeah. The creator has been heralded for its VFX, even from people who don't like the movie. Uh, I, I guess one thing you could baby point to the fact that Napoleon is a production design nomination, and it's the only one here that does. I just. Uh, I didn't want to, like, watch what, like, BAFTA does. Yeah, know. watch what BAFTA does. I like, think... It's I, kind of I, weird I, that, like... Because I feel like the past couple of years, obviously, we've had very easy VFX winners. Because there's just been front runners, And now we're just, like... Even without the best picture like, front runners, like, Tenet felt easy. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's prepping us for next year when dudes... I guess I guess first man wasn't as easy. I I predicted it, but yeah, yeah it's coming um, us next year for dude. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> like here's um, a really hard one, and then next year's going to be a really something a really easy one. I I'm still going to say the creator, especially because of its surprise nomination in another category. Um, oh right, <laughs> I forgot about that. But yeah, I'm gonna. I I hear it. This kind of is I mean, it, it makes sense. I think it's probably going to win Visual Effects Society, or, or actually, no, my Oppenheimer might win that. <laughs> God damn it! I forgot. <laughs> I forgot that Oppenheimer did not make the long list. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think um I the creator a, will win. I think I'll flip a coin between like Napoleon. Visual Effects Society could also win BAFTA. I'm going to Napoleon. I don't know. That's like three nominations. Thank you for Napoleon. <laughs> but the creator has easily the most impressive of the, of the uh, well, I, I say of this lineup. I haven't seen Godzilla yet. Um, Godzilla would be a cool win. I think Godzilla is happy to be here. If I'm being super honest. I think it's yeah, happy to be here. Kind of, kind of what I feel like too. Like I, I, I just I don't know. I don't. I know people like Guardians of the Galaxy's the effects in like comparison yeah. with other Marvel movies. I mean, um, it is better than other Marvel movies. You gotta agree. So, I don't know. This category is confusing. I want to go to the next category before I get a headache, because, like, oh my god, this category is just... And, like, almost anything could win here, so... Well, here's a category that just completely fucked us over. Best sound. <laughs> um, the creator... <laughs> Maestro, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, uh, Part 1, Oppenheimer, and The Zone of Interest. That's three out of five. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I want to um do this. You can't see me right now, but I'm uh slamming the palm of my hand against my forehead because <laughs> I was very skeptical about Killers of the Flower Moon in sound all season. Very skeptical. Thinking back about the movie, it would have been a really interesting nomination. I mean, I, I just felt like it's not because the Irishman didn't get sound. It's also just because, like, 
I didn't come away from that movie really thinking the sound design was like all that impressive. Yeah. Like, it's not it's bad. Good. But it's, not the, it's not the standard of the movie. Yeah. Like, it's not like the editing or the score or the cinematography. No, it's just like, it's not really all that, all that noteworthy. But it got Cinema Audio Society, it got a lot of nominations at MPSC, so I was like, I guess I'll just do it. And I'm also going to do this, slamming my head into my forehead thing again, because I said a long time ago the creator could get in here. Because um, like, it was after I saw the film, because like, I saw the movie in IMAX, and I was like, this, this is some really showy sound work. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if it got nominated. I actually haven't seen it for yet. This is one of the and movies I actually haven't seen. It, it, it's good. It's not amazing, but it's good. Uh, and I don't know. I just thought, like, they could do this, but then, like, I don't, it, I don't think it got any sound precursor at all. Like, maybe it got something at NPSE. If I did, I missed it. But uh, it just, like, it didn't do shit. Nope. At none. None. None, from what I can tell. So, nothing for how did, how did it get in then? Because, actually, <laughs> hold on a second. I, I have. <laughs> I recognize one of the names in the uh, nominee list. I'm looking at it now. Oh, yeah. Two of the people on it did Maestro. <laughs> uh, Dean I mean, Zupanic and Tom Ozanic. Um, oh, one both, of them is. Also... A two-time Academy Award winner. I see. One of them is uh, one for uh, Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, and King Kong. Also was nominated for two Transformers films, Argo, and A Quiet Place. Okay, well... So, so that, that, that explains it. Uh, what about these other, the other ones, though? Oh, this... The, the, okay, this guy's... This is his first one. His first nomination. I'm happy Zone of Interest got in here, though. Probably, it should be winning the category, in my opinion. Yeah, one um, of these guys with four. This guy has four nominations. For, including one for Maestro. And this other guy has five nominations, also including one for Maestro. So, yeah, that, that makes sense. These guys have been nominated a bunch. Um... I'm kind of surprised Ferrari's not here because that got everything. But uh, people don't like the sound work in it. Yeah. And I so was like not predicting f- slam, slam your head into the slam your hand to the forehead moment because I was not predicting it for a long time because people complained about the sound work. They said it was like the mixing was terrible and the sound editing was terrible. But it got everything, so I was like all right, I didn't like the sound editing. Ready. It was just the the sound mixing, and like I think people also thought I was gonna get in because like Cosmo Zoom. <laughs> yeah, one thing that I do not understand in sound, I still don't understand sound, even 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 as it's not here. Why was there a whole thing about Barbie in sound? <laughs> I don't know why Barbie was in sound. I don't. I don't understand it. I love the movie. I don't understand why it was getting sound nominations. <laughs> Is it because of the? The, the the I'm just Ken sequence and the mixing of that scene? Is it because of the off- like goofy ex- sound effects? People have like offered explanations like that. I can't remember what any of them are, but like people have offered a couple explanations. If I'm like, sure, cool, I still don't think it should get in. Yeah, it 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 doesn't need it. It really doesn't need it. But it's really interesting. I think as we'll get into later, some of it just had a really interesting day. So they got some really um, good, un- good nominations. Having now seen missed, it too, it, it missed in a couple places. Having now wow. seen the zone of interest, I I want to say it it absolutely should win this category. It is. It should win this category. It's like the best sound work of the year, bar none. Some some of the best like of the of recent memory, um, and Johnny Byrne, <laughs> listen this this man did Nope, which also had some amazing sound work. That should have been nominated. Um, oh, he's worked on Yorgos Lanthimos's films. Oh, he worked on Ammonite. <laughs> well, he's British, so I mean, <laughs> he um, worked on several Yorgos Lanthimos yeah. movies. 
and under yeah. the end. So him working on this actually isn't too much of a shocker, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and and they brought him. And A twenty four was getting him out there for like Q and A's and stuff. Because, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, kind of like uh, how they got Hans Zimmer out there for Dune a lot. Like he mm. was like part of the film, and it makes sense because like I was watching an interview with Johnny Byrne, and well, uh, it wasn't an interview with him. It was more like it was like a talk between him and Jonathan Glazer and Sandra Hu or Kristen Friedel. And he and Johnny Byrne was there, and he was talking about like how like film one is the film you see, film two is the film you hear with the zone of interest, mm. and like really inter- like how in the sound work and how they created like a sound library for like a year. Oh and, yeah, like, I they, heard, they, I read that. Yeah, and they like, they mixed it based on like where like the distance it would have realistically been heard from. It's really interesting sound work, too, and it absolutely should win. Not Dog and Oppenheimer, which is going to win, but yeah. Yeah, Oppenheimer's a good sound work, but like, yeah, no. The only interest should win, bar none. Best sound work of like the year. Mm hmm. Maybe best sound work of like the decade, honestly, is like absolutely stunning. Yeah, I was kind of alluding to that earlier. That's yeah. like, yeah. If, if the Zone of Interest came out in 2020, like, and like, like it could have won there, honestly. Yeah. I mean, maybe Sound of Metal could have edged it out because it's Sound of Metal, but yeah. Yeah, congratulations, Alton <laughs> Uh Best uh, production design, which also having seen Zone of Interest kind of frustrates me. Um, Barbie, yeah, Killers of the Flower Moon, <laughs> Napoleon. Oppenheimer and poor things, which look. Why is Napoleon here? I get it. Big sets, <laughs> big castles, and shit. But like, okay, I, I haven't seen like, the movie. You yet, guys so. clearly watched the Zone of Interest. Like, what? What? Why? Like, it's the house is like as big a part of that film as the house and Parasite was to that film, or how the apartment was to the father. It's like it, it's such an integral part of the film, and like placing ten cameras around that house specifically for like the way they wanted the film to be shot. Like, how is that not good enough for you? Is <laughs> the question. How is that not good enough for you? That you have to be like, eh, well, who cares? Let's just nominate Napoleon because. Big flashy sets. I think other than that, I think the category is great. Other than that, other than uh, yeah, I, other, I really other than like, that, I really, I really like the category. Other than that, it's a good, it's a good lineup, sure. But like, I, I'm kind of annoyed that Zone of Interest isn't here. Who's winning? I don't um, know. Who's winning? Um, um see who wins like ADG <laughs> and CDG. Yeah, because Barbie and poor ADG, things yeah. are are up against each other there. Yeah, they're in the same category. So I um I'll see who wants there, I'll see who wants BAFTA, then I'll figure it out. I have a <laughs> feeling it's going to be Barbie. I think it'll be Barbie too. Um <clears throat> I think poor things should win it. I I uh, I think and again I'm not trying to dog Barbie because the the, the Barbie Dream House uh sets are absolutely insane but um i don't know i just kind of feel like that they, they they go with the, the 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 dream house for the win here but like i feel like poor things production design and is more like nothing you've ever seen compared to, to to barbie which is recreating something recreating something very well but i don't know i yeah, think there's I'm something with, i'm fine with them both winning, so. there's I'm fine with Barbie winning too, but I feel I'm like fine. for me at least there's a bit more of a novelty to, to poor things. Yeah, I I I find both going and I'll be perfectly fine. With it, so I think I'll yeah. predict Barbie unless poor things wins uh, ADG personally. Yeah, yeah, poor things wins Archer to skill. That's when that's when you're like, oh shit, <laughs> oh shit, yeah. Yeah, I, don't know. I think this category is really good, other than Napoleon, which I haven't seen yet. Granted, but. Yeah, they should have done the zone of interest for real. All right, <laughs> makeup and hairstyling. 
uh, Golda, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Poor Things, Society of the Snow. A like category that five five. A, a lot of people went five for five in, yeah, including this myself. This was a really easy category. <laughs> I mean, super honest. Yeah, because like you could, some people did Last Voyage of the Demeter, which could have happened, sure. It's a horror but, movie, but probably not. Well, it's a horror movie, and also like two people on the planet have seen it. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I, mean, I mean, other than that, like nothing really made sense. Like, Bo's Afraid yeah. was like never just, happening, like, way too out never there. happening. <laughs> uh, Killers, like, what did they do? Um, I was gonna say, shit, I what else is what well, else is on the short list now? I'm blanking on the last two because uh, I wasn't Guardians. I remember being shocked at that miss. Ferrari not getting nominated. And oh yeah, Ferrari was absolutely never happening. And yeah, oh yeah, Napoleon, which was like I don't know a why lot of Ferrari hair. was like there for like the little bit of makeup on Adam Driver, like <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> so We're... this is an easy category. There's kind of nothing else that could be nominated. Yeah, so... I am hoping for a poor things victory. As uh... unlikely as that might be, there's another one where. Um, uh... we don't want to have right now. Maestro still. I mean, I get. I, look, I get my show. I'm just like, I think it's just gonna win. Yeah, it's the kind of thing that wins. It's just like we've so boring. Wins like it's so happen. boring. I know we we've, we've seen wins happen like this before, where the actor doesn't win. So like, yeah, even when the actor doesn't win. So I think he's, and, I think he's just winning. Yeah. I don't know. Looked at one of the first fucked face. Okay, and tell I know, me I think here. Yeah. deserve to win. Like, yeah. uh, how people could do it with the straight faces. Yeah. Insane. <clears throat> okay, well, that was quick. <laughs> Best <laughs> film editing. This is this one's going to be fun. Anatomy of a Fall, The Holdovers, Killers of the Fire Moon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. Yeah, for Anatomy of a Fall, I, want to, I want to do a victory lap here because I, I said after I saw this movie... Listen, <laughs> anatomy of a fall. This can get film editing. I'm telling you, this can get film editing. I, I'm just happy I, just, I put this in. I was almost, I almost had the tar effect because last year after I saw tar, I was like, you know, guys, tar can get editing. I really <laughs> think tar can get editing. But then everyone said, no, no way. Too slow. Too many long takes. Roma didn't get nominated. All, all this stuff. And then it didn't make the bath longer. So I'm like, okay, I guess you're right. I guess it's not getting nominated for editing. And then it gets in for editing. I'm like, stupid. You, you could have called that. I did it like in Thailand vibes, basically. <laughs> so then, but but when anatomy started coming coming up and everything, and I I mean I saw the movie, I was like, man, that's that's really showy work. The fact that you know it's two and a half hours long and it moves at that breakneck pace, you know the cutting between the evidence mm, and the yeah. courtroom and. All those scenes, like the edit, also the editing is specifically tuned to the dialogue of the film in During a way that, nominees. in a way that's similar to other nominees. Like, I don't know, guys, this can happen. And I held, I held my ground for, I, like, I, I took it out for a little bit when it, France didn't submit it, I think. But, um, when it started to rise up again, I was like, guys, this, no, I really think this could happen because I, I foresaw the vision. Get, gets BAFTA. It's getting ACE drama. The movie's kind of rising up, especially after the movie got PGA and then it got BAFTA Best Film. I was like, yeah, that motherfucker's getting in. Um, that being said, I do need to kind of um, cave because I never thought that The Holdovers was a serious, that serious an editing contender because I, I just, I, I didn't really see why it would get editing instead of it just, if it were just a top three contender, but here it is. So, okay, you 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 get you win on that one. I take the L there. But when it comes to I anatomy, would, I, I would personally nominate it. Totally. Yeah. When it comes to anatomy, I, <laughs> I um, I, I I I get the high ground there because, uh, I I stuck to my gut that time. Um, I guess you could say this is the first of uh, some major misses for Barbie. Yeah. Um movie underperformed like hell too. 
see when it came to Barbie, a lot of people like were predicting that this would miss. Some people were also predicting that poor things would miss too, but like I guess Barbie makes more sense if it's like the blockbuster type thing. I wouldn't know when they did over the holdovers. Sorry, the holdovers. I see there's other things I'd put in too. Like I'd want to put in how to blow up a pipeline, for example. Or past lives, I think would be a great choice here. Like I don't necessarily need Barbie to get an editing nomination, even though it 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 would make sense if it did. But uh, yeah, Anatomy yeah, is in editing, uh, just as I just as I said it would just as I said it would be just as I said it would be. Yeah, I don't know why I started predicting it, but I I did I I did predict Anatomy. I went four for five in this category. I also went four for five because I didn't have the holdovers in the end. I had Barbie still. I brought those well. All right, uh, best uh, costume design. Uh, Barbie, Killers of the Flower Moon, Napoleon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. The exact same five nominees as production design. Once again, I don't know why Oppenheimer. Boring. I don't know why Oppenheimer. Suits? That's boring. I guess the, I, I mean, look, I, I didn't say it for a long, I said for a long time, eh, who cares? I know the Irishman got in when it was men in suits, but like that was Sandy Powell, this costume designer. He's not very well known. But eventually I gave in because I just kind of realized like they're just gonna like eat this movie to death. And clearly like a lot of branches are just gonna want to get like a slice of the pie. They want they all want in on the Oppenheimer. Um, circle jerk. That's uh, interesting because Maestro was my so first. Which just... is, I think, also why a lot of people were predicting it. So I guess they just put it put it in despite that. So I was just like, all right, I guess I guess it's happening, and here it is. I read the one I... Maestro, and I didn't like their costume. Didn't care for that costume either. <laughs> I, I, it's I, I mean, suits thing. It doesn't make sense. It's, it's boring. It is boring. I agree. At but least like, Maxwell had the dress. Maxwell had Carrie's dress. Yeah. Like, or, well, Carrie's dress is, you should say. Yes, it was like, there were a lot of them. I would have wanted like, my show. Like, Oppenheimer. So this is just, just... It's a boring nomination. It made Oppenheimer... Essentially, Max out got, like, I think, literally every single nomination it could have gone. <laughs> so... Yeah. Like, you oh. could have put Priscilla in here, you could have put in the color purple, you could have put in Bo's Afraid. Like, so many other things you could have put in here. And, and I also don't think Napoleon needs to be here either. Like, I, I get why it's here, obviously, but, like, I, I don't, like, you don't have yeah, to do go that. go Oppenheimer, put in Priscilla, and then, like, we're all happy. Yeah. Yeah, you could replace Oppenheimer and Napoleon with Priscilla, and, um... Uh, what was the other one I said? Bo's afraid. Bo's afraid or color purple, and we're all happy. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, I'm always for CDG. I don't know if I just, oh no, with the point on. I, I think I've always believed that Barbie would take costumes, even a poor thing in production design. Personally, that's how I would like it to go. I think I would like Barbie to win costumes and poor things to win production design. Yeah. Why oh, didn't make I sense? Mean, Jacqueline, they like Jacqueline. They quite like Jacqueline Duran. She's a Jacqueline Duran, yeah, she has two already, including one for a Greta Gerwig film. So, um, not going to be super shocked if she wins. So. She's probably going to. I mean, I think yeah. the fact that, like, recreating Barbie outfits, it's kind of like production design, where it's like... Yeah, yeah. You do that. Uh, weirdly enough, though, I, I, I don't have the same feeling with costumes for Barbie as I do with Barbie versus poor things in costumes. I do it in production design, where like I feel like poor things is like more otherworldly uh, costumes or, or sets. And this one here is too, but like I feel like I I'm maybe more impressed by by the Barbie costumes because of like I don't know. It's it's a weird contradiction. I can't really explain it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, um, I, this is another one where I'm, I'm like, fine with either winning. 
Um, I'd like Barbie to win costumes and poor things to win production design would be in like a perfect world. That's yeah, I think I think that's the split I would go with. <laughs> so that's how that's how I, I think it should go. Yeah. So, but um I was gonna say wish was CDG, but I assume they're not nominated in the same category. So they're not. No, no production design they are costume. Yeah. Yeah, I will wait for BAFTA, I assume, so to see who wins. Yeah. From there, so I I kind of have a I have a feeling though that it's a bit more like Black Panther versus the favorite here. Mm, yeah. More so than in production design. Though also yeah. in production. Yeah. So I think they could go either way there, so. Alright, cinematography. Uh, there we go. El Conde. It was a fire moon maestro, Oppenheimer, poor things. Again, so many of us went four for five in this category. <laughs> pretty disappointed by Zone of Interest not being here. I. It, it kind of makes even less sense in a way because it's Lucas All who they've nominated twice, but I guess only for black and white four by three films. I mean, Edward Lockman has two other. Nominations, aside. yeah, that's Both also Andre, true, so, and it's in black and white. I, I, I guess, like, it, it just goes to show if the ASC does a black and white or foreign language film or both, if they do it, the Oscars are going to fall up. Yeah, it's just, just a, every, it was like every black time. and white of it all. I mean, every they time. love black and white. It's not to say that El Conde doesn't look good because it does, but like, I don't know if you want to take out something from this category, like, honestly, you don't have. Have to nominate Maestro. <laughs> you don't have to nominate. No, I you think don't. The, the ultimate reason at all, actually, didn't make it here is because yeah, the, it, it looks like raw camera footage, like it wasn't color graded at all, <laughs> which, which is on purpose. But um, that's a really, it, that's a really. It, it, it also accurate. is just like. I guess the unglamorousness of it all, yeah, is why I miss. Which, you know, I mean, Tar isn't the most glamorous looking movie either, but I don't know. I guess that movie just doesn't look like you filmed something on a on a camera and then took it and said, "All right, it's done. No more cinematography needed," <laughs> or something to that effect. <laughs> it's just the black and white of it all for uh, my team. Fucking branch loves black and white. Uh, congratulations, Oppenheimer. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Congratulations, uh, Hoytman, Hoytman. Yeah. Hopefully, Riot, Robbie Ryan can get his uh, his due someday, though. Uh, uh, also, I think all of these nominees are people who have never won. I think so, yeah. I'd have to check that, but I, I, I think so, so. Yeah. Uh, if only Zona was just kicking here, and um, I guess so much for that uh salt burn hype that was coming up in uh, in the voting period. What happened to that, huh? I will stand by that. I think it would have been a good nomination. I think cinematography in that movie is great. I mean, if it was going to get anything, it probably I probably would have said like it should have been here over something else. But, like, I, I still don't think the movie is all that good. <laughs> um, uh, anyway. Is that all the text? Yeah, we're done with the crafts. Woohoo. Uh, that went through quicker than I thought it would. Uh, hopefully these, these categories give us more to talk about, though. Original screenplay. Anatomy of a Fall. Screenplay. Justine Trier and Artur Harari. The Holdovers. David Hemmingson, Maestro, Bradley Cooper, and Josh Singer. May December, screenplay by Sammy Birch, story by Sammy Birch and Alex Mechanic. And Past Lives, written by Celine Song. I said it was um, gone Maestro, but I really didn't want him to get nominated. Yeah, I need to take the L on that one too. I said I want for air. the longest time, Maestro does not need to get a screenplay nomination to get Best Picture. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't. Now, granted, I also said that about King Richard for a long time. I was in denial. That's all. <laughs> that was also that was more denial than that. But mine was pure denial. <laughs> I, I said this about King Richard. Like, 
King Richard's not in the screenplay nomination, but King Richard just showed up at every critic's thing, and I and I also I felt like King Richard was just more writery than Maestro. But then when Maestro got bapped, I was like, okay, I guess it happened. I guess it's gonna be King Richard, and it's here. So I guess Maestro was King Richard. So I I apologize to all the Maestro and screenplay truthers. It it was King Richard all along. I got this category five for five. Um, May December. This is the film's only nomination. Which a crime. A crime. It's so it's bittersweet, but at the same time, like I am also glad it does have something. Yeah. I uh it makes sense as a lone screenplay nominee in retrospect, it really does. Yeah, uh, mine was straight denial for Maestro because I just did not want it to get nominated. I think. What did you have instead? I had Air. <laughs> air. Yeah, once that movie didn't get a single SAG nomination, I was like, yeah, that, that movie is cooked. <laughs> I am. I was just no. I just didn't want Maestro to get a nomination. I I think like the screenplay for Maestro is like by far like the worst part of the movie. I know people who love the movie and agree that screenplay. Like, Absolutely. Yeah, I, I really don't I really don't know why it's here. I really wish I knew why it was here. I'd rather air over this movie because I mean I also like to air more than Maestro, but I'd rather air here over Maestro. I I I, I mean, not that this was ever going to happen, but I I would rather have um uh monster over Maestro. I would also love monster here. Be a good pick. Um, other than that, this category is pretty straightforward. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, as far as who's winning, I I think I it's a bit know. interesting race. <laughs> it's anatomy or holdovers. I just don't know which one. Probably. Yeah, it's one of those two. Oh, sorry, um, past, so sorry to past lives. You're not in the conversation anymore. <laughs> yeah. So sorry. It's, it's sad for me. Yeah, it's going to be one or the other. I mean, is it's going to continue none of the screenplay uh, precursors are any help at all. Um, I so. um, have decided I'm probably just going to predict whatever BAFTA does. And if they go Barbie? Well, if they go Barbie, I predict that and adapt it. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. Well, that doesn't um, help your original prediction, does it? No, it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't... I, I think it's unlikely they go with Barbie, though. I would be also perfect. be very shocked if they went Barbie. Considering it did um, not be nominated for picture, I would be very shocked. But um, uh, Yeah, with whatever Bafta goes, as long as they don't go Barbie, I guess. Yeah. Who knows what could win Anatomy and Holdovers are nominated for film, which makes this really difficult. I guess for what film is more Bafta core, I would Na- probably anatomy. go with Anatomy. I'm yeah. Anatomy. It's gonna be impossible though without WJ and like I'm And also that not that WJ is, is any help at all either. Anatomy yeah. isn't even eligible there. And Barbie's in original, so like it just it's screenplay just, race is just I can't you can't <laughs> predict like base like I guess like you kind of have to in this situation, like predict on hypothetical scenarios, but like I really can't just can't do that. Screenplay this year is just a big shrug. <laughs> Yeah, I, the uh, crisis, they're literally yeah no help. <laughs> it's it's so weird. I mean, it's kind of strange that the holdovers didn't get nominated for the Golden Globe. It is Regar- really weird. Regar- regardless of David Hemmingson not being a name. Yeah, it is very weird. Like it doesn't that doesn't matter. Justine Trier literally won. <laughs> and that's the other thing, winning the Golden Globe. But then again, when was the last time they uh, a, a screenplay winner was not nominated for Critic's Choice. Also, at the same time, though, and Anime Fall at the time of the Critic's Choice was not top top five movie. Um, so they, I guess, they just didn't feel the need to go for. It. I don't know. It's fucking weird. Uh, I <laughs> also, if Barbie was an original, what does it kick out, Maestro or May December? If Barbie didn't move. For the sake of me coping, I'm going to say my show. <laughs> um, I, I do think it May December could have still made it though, because okay. like that is a very um, 
like much of the conversation around that film was the screenplay. Okay. So, and the question for what the sixth that adapts the screenplay is like literally no question. So, well, we can move on to that if you don't have anything to, else to add. <laughs> Uh, no, not really. These screenplay categories are really odd this year. <laughs> Adapted screenplay, then. <laughs> uh, American Fiction, written for the screen by Cord Jefferson. Barbie, written by Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach. Oppenheimer, written for the screen by Christopher Nolan. Poor Things, screenplay by Tony McNamara. And The Zone of Interest, written by Jonathan Glazer. I remember it. Killers one- got manked. <laughs> I remember I, I, this happened with me and my friends as well, but I've watched a whole bunch of reactions because I watched your guys' reactions as well and other people's and people like, because obviously we know that they're in alphabetical order, right? So we go, right. oh, American fiction, Barbie, and we all go, kill us with the flower moon, and then it's not, and we're all just like, what the fuck? See, yeah, because we're all, <laughs> we're like, we're all what aware of the fuck? See, when, kill, when I saw the killer's miss, I was like, I, I knew in my head, I was like, the zone of interest. <laughs> I know, you're, I was like, wait. <laughs> yeah, and, and I even said it, I was like, right before it happened, I was like, oh god, I know what's coming next. Because it was just, it's like, there was no other possibility. Like, okay. Take zone of interest out of the equation. What would have the other possibilities have been? All the strangers. Maybe, are you there, God, it's me, Margaret. And then... What else? That's it, right? <laughs> like, and I thought if I if Killers was going to miss, which I didn't think was impossible, but I didn't dare predict it. I thought if Killers was going to miss, it was not going to be for the Zone of Interest. It was going to be for All of Us Strangers, which I think quite sadly ended up with zero Oscar nominations, even if it wasn't surprising. Having seen the Zone of Interest, though, I actually don't think the screenplay nomination is, like, that crazy. (laughs) I think it's, like, interesting. I think... I can see why people wouldn't want it in screenplay. See, my my impression of it early on was, like, uh, there's not really a story. It's just kind of a concept. So I was like, yeah, I'm not putting that shit in my top ten at all. Like, no way that's getting it. No way, no way, no way. And then, like, as the season went on, it started getting screenplay nominations. Like, it got... Like, I remember I got Gotham for screenplay. Um, and it was got... Miss BAFTA. It did. I feel and, like, like all of us overlooked, by the way. <laughs> stone, I, I didn't completely overlook it, overlook it. That's why I said I thought it was possible. But I, I was like, if it's going to be for anything, it's going to be for, for all of us strangers. Um, because that's just... Because, like... That that's just a more traditionally writery film, but um, I don't know. With Zone of Interest, it got the Gotham nomination. It got a few screenplay nominations here and there, and oh shoot, what else did it get? It got something else that was kind of big, and it got BAFTA, and it just it, it just um slid its way in here over Killers of the Flower Moon, which I'm trying to figure out why Killers actually ultimately missed in the end of, at the end of the day. Like, what, what, what was it about that movie that made people not want to nominate the screenplay? I wish I could tell you. <laughs> and look, The Zone of Interest, I, I know it seems weird on, on the face of it, but having seen it, it's like, no, it actually kind of makes sense. Because... Because, like, it, it's setting up the concept for the film. Like, a lot of that is done through the script. Mm-hmm. And um, also, like, I guess the fact that it's very, very different from the book. It's apparently I was going to mention on. that. It's, it's very, it's, it, it really diverges. That, that might be, like, why they ultimately did that. So I think, like, with setting up the whole concept of it and, like, it's not like there's no dialogue at all. Like there's actually there's there actually is a lot of it. It's just like there's not really a plot to it. There's not really a I guess plot that people normally anticipate when going into a movie. Yeah. It's it's really all about structure. Yeah. 
I don't know if I would personally my... nominate it. I don't think, no, if I would personally nominate it, but I think it's a really inspired nomination and I'm very happy for it. So, um, where are you right now in this category in terms of a winner? Because, um, I want to make a dartboard <laughs> and just throw <laughs> whatever <laughs> and see what it lands on. Zone of interest. Because <laughs> I think, I don't think Zone of interest is winning. I think that's probably the only one that probably doesn't stand a chance. Yeah, yeah, but I like, said that as a joke. <laughs> but like, I think any of the other four. But so, it's really friggin' difficult. Here's what I'm gonna say about this. It's probably gonna be Poor Things versus Oppenheimer at BAFTA. Um, Barbie's an original BAFTA, so, you know, that doesn't help us. Are we being just in original everywhere else like this category is really hard? I, um... I kind of have a feeling it's going to be Barbie versus American Fiction. And the reason I'm putting American Fiction into the equation here is, I mean, it won the Critic Choice Award. Granted, you could say, like, Amazon kind of bought them off, but it, it's still something that people recognize as, as something that, that, that won. I also have this feeling that it's going to win the USC Scripter, which, to be fair, is, mm. is, is like a committee of, like, five people. And like they also say. nominated, they also nominated like Origin, which, by the way, <laughs> ep- epic fail, <laughs> epic fail on uh, getting that movie in Francis. Um, I think, like obviously, I don't think something ever coming in, but I think one of the issues with the thing on Origin was like unlike with To Leslie, where there was a big concerted effort around specifically Andrea Riseboro. I think there needed to be a much bigger effort around Anjanu Ellis. Yeah, that 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 was why most of us were like, okay, this one no. Because appealing and also, like, to the yeah. entire academy is harder than appealing to like the acting branch. The acting branch is like eighteen on the people. It's yeah. the biggest branch, but like it's not that large. It's like so. I think they needed to focus it around. Like, yeah, on that's why, and the, yeah, that's why. Yeah, that's why it didn't happen. Would have worked out right. a little better, honestly. So, uh, I mean, I, I, who knows why Francis Fisher tried to push that? But yeah, it just like I, I'm like, just noting how I like, didn't see what she pushes next year. <laughs> it didn't happen. Oh my god, next year she's gonna push. I can see what she pushes next, next year. This Neil, what I'm Neil Breen, with. Neil Breen for best director. This is what we're all gonna look forward to every year is to see what Francis Fisher. Neil Breen for best director. Neil. I, I do think it would have been really funny if Origin had gone something and Francis Fisher just became a precursor. Oh my god, <laughs> we'd have to treat her like Diane Warren. <laughs> oh my god, what Francis Fisher pushing? That's that's gotta be in. That's gotta be in. <laughs> um. Anyway, back to back to adapted screen. Um, I don't know. I just have a feeling that like American Fiction is going to win Scripter. Yes, and, a like, USC Scripter, as a reminder, is American Fiction, Cult of Fire Moon, which obviously isn't nominated here, uh, Oppenheimer Origin, and Things. Yeah. I, 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 I get the feeling that like in Critics' Choice and USC Scripter combo has won a lot. Women Talking did it last year. Um, Moonlight or yeah, Moonlight was adapted correct choice. Call Me By Your Name, Blake Short. Some of those were sweepers, to be fair. But it, it is something that, you know, sometimes we'll call the winner. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that, like American fiction, especially with when it got two extra nominations that we did not expect it to get at all, I, I, I feel like that there's, there's definitely enough passion for American fiction to pull out a win here. Um, the question is, so. is there like just too much residual love it, or is there too, or are there too many people who like the idea of Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach winning together for Barbie? I mean, for, also for like thing. the fact that, well, as we'll talk about later, Greta Gerwig did not get a director nomination and this is like... The, the one place person. they can reward her. I mean, to be fair, they also said this about Little Women, and that didn't that didn't work out. I mean, fair. Um, I think. Um, I mean, not not to say that she can't win. I'm. Pr- I might be predicting her right now, even, but 
I think I would predict Barbie right now. Um, I mean, as I said, if Barbie were to win BAFTA screenplay, I would predict I um, Barbie to win here. 100%. But, I mean, it's going to be hard without WGA. And Not WGA, so. I mean, even after the Oscars, like, it's like a month after the Oscars. They could just go crazy. Like, it, like they could just decide to go with past lives, for all we know. Um, I, I remember I predicted Barbie to win at the, at the Globes because I thought that they might like the idea of Greta and Noah accepting together. But that obviously didn't happen. It went to the other um, married couple screenwriting <laughs> pair, which, 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 by the way, worth noting, there's a lot of uh, married four. couples nominated. It was four. Four or five, at least. Um, yeah, and also Barbie seems like something like old. Yeah. Like kind of regardless of anything. It seems like something old Globes would do. Yeah, I, mm. I'll, I'll probably go Barbie for now. I think American Fiction could win. I think Oppenheimer could win. I think Oppenheimer Oregon could win. win, yeah. Anything could happen. Um, I mean, another thing, too, about American Fiction that <laughs> not women talking to have last year, American Fiction actually managed to get the BAFTA nomination. Yeah, so... Even despite... Baptist history with with race, <laughs> and despite the film not being on the BAFTA long list, I mean, shit, I'm almost convincing myself right in this moment to 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 say American fiction. And I, I'm like looking I, at Eustace Scripter, and I don't I don't know enough of the early like twenty two twenty tens adapted winners. So Social Network won. Mm-hmm. The descendant the Descendants did that win screenplay. Yes. Yes. Um, Argo won, right? Yes. Twelve Years a Slave. Yes. Uh, Imitation Game. Yes. The Big Short. Yes. Moonlight won. Uh, Call Me by Your Name. This did not win. This did not win. This one, and then that one. So that's ten since ten and twelve years. Yeah. But it's hard because Barbie isn't here. Because I guess like. Like the lost daughter winning here a couple years ago, Coda wasn't eligible in this category, for example. Like Barbie also not eligible. Yeah, that's that's so. the only that's that's the asterisk you have to put there. Yeah. Like, and Black Klansman was not nominated. No, it was not nominated. Uh, which I still don't understand. Yeah, uh, Leave uh, No Trace won. Yeah, and that wasn't even nominated for the Oscar, so I I uh... So but yeah, they ever Hmm. Pretty good track record. <laughs> yeah, with the Academy. I think I think if you if American Fiction wins USC, I'm gonna predict. I'm gonna predict it. I might predict it. I'm almost convincing myself to do it now, to be honest with you, because I I I just see the vision for it. Like it's a film that's like generally really well liked, and it got no, extra see, nominations, and you know it's a well written, funny film. Like I. Yeah, I can I'm gonna see say this. What origin win now? We're gonna say this. What origin win now? <laughs> oh my god, that'd be <laughs> hilarious. Nah, I, I, I'm almost convincing myself to switch to American fiction. I really am. I think it could win. I think that's a little where it wins. Um, I would love it to win personally. I like the movie. Um, I just don't know how much I love the screenplay of it and how it blends the satire and. The like drama aspects of the film didn't completely work for me, but certainly mm. wouldn't be the worst win in this category. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Definitely had way worse winners in this category. Coda won a couple of years ago, for example. So, you know. Right, let's have some fun. <laughs> Supporting actor. <laughs> Sterling K. Brown in American fiction. Speaking of American fiction. <laughs> Robert De Niro in Killers of the Flower Moon, Robert Downey Jr. in Oppenheimer, Ryan Gosling in Barbie, Mark Ruffalo, poor things. <laughs> Let's pour one out for Charles Melton. I, I I held on to him. Did you hold, hold on to him? I went throughout that everyone else went, and why Perry did both poor things boys in the hope that one of them got in. Well, one of them did. <laughs> you feel this was... K. Brown's nomination. It's a little strange. I like the movie a lot more than you did. I, I, I think he's very good. I, I'm like, is that performance really Oscar worthy though? Yeah, I was saying to my friend, I'm like, I'm happy that Still Hanky Brown has an Oscar nomination. Yeah, it, it, it almost feels like makeup for waves in a way. 
because I don't know how I feel about him like being like nominated. I, a lot of people thought he should have been in for Waves, mm-hmm. and that movie just didn't catch any traction at all because it it's just not that great. Because it's just not the type of movie the Oscars generally would nominate. Congratulations, Robert Downey yeah. Jr. Congratulations, your Oscar. <laughs> I um yeah that's that's probably what's going to happen. Yeah, congratulations. This is going to be a potentially controversial take. I think the past four winners in this category are all better than RDJ. I I mean, yeah. <laughs> like cuz like I I I mean I, I, you could even argue for Marshall and Green Book. I, I, I don't know that I would, but um. Okay, I don't know if I go. Marshall Lee is good. Like, Brad, Brad Pitt, and uh, Daniel Kaluuya and Troy Kotsur and Kiki Kwan, I all think are better than RDJ. I, I, I maybe I, I need think to I might like RDJ again. I think I might like RDJ over Troy Kotsur a little bit. And that's a I don't know, maybe, that maybe I just need to watch the movie again, but like I'm, I don't know. I don't really get it. I don't see it. Robert Downey Jr. wins. I think the world plays. I think he'll play pretty high. I think he might place. I think he'll place like six above Judas. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm. It's on 13 in my place. Okay. Um, or it'll be. It'll either be below Judas or above Judas. But it's okay. gonna be about so. Yeah, I, I've just kind of accepted it at this point, and you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to rewatch the film soon. Um, I I I'm really thinking like uh for this show we're doing individual episodes on all the best picture nominees. So before I get around to 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 that, I'm I I plan to um <laughs> to to rewatch uh, Oppenheimer. I'll probably rewatch both of the best picture nominees. Um, probably the ones I haven't seen in a while, like Killers and Oppenheimer and Barbie. I haven't seen in a while. Um, I don't think I'll get to Poor Things just because I don't know if it'll be out on VOD in time. Um, but I'll try to get to like most of them again. But I haven't seen since like the summer. Ruffalo uh, could have been Sam Marco and Vice, but that didn't take off. Obviously, they meant to say Sam Rockwell with three billboards here. He's he, he, he's so good in the movie, and without Charles Melton here, it would be my my choice. So so sad All that right. we don't have a, a Riverdale actor nominated in <laughs> in the, the Oscars. Uh, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't even know like who would be next up after Charles Melton though. You just gotta keep acting and, <laughs> and be like good projects. Uh, Charles Charles Melton needs to get with some of the people uh, <laughs> who made films he picked in his Criterion Closet video. <laughs> yeah, let's get uh, Hamaguchi to direct an American film. <laughs> you guys have drive my car. <laughs> Do you guys have drive my car? <gasps> uh. Anyway, actress in a supporting role. <laughs> oh, oh, this guy. <laughs> oh my god. Emily Blunt in Oppenheimer. Daniel Brooks, the color purple. America Ferreira in <laughs> Barbie. Um, Jodie Foster in Nyad and Dave Enjoy Randolph in The Holdovers. So, what's the lesson we learn from, from, from the America Ferreira nomination? Uh, the lesson learned is never, 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 ever not predict a lone Critics' Choice nominee <laughs> when it comes to the acting categories because they keep fucking happening. They keep fucking happening. It feels like every year now, uh, what, Brian Tyree Henry or J.K. Simmons or uh, Yelitsa yeah, Aparicio. Granted, Roma was like for for Best Picture. Whatever. Um... They just keep happening. This is an America- underwhelming category. Person who was who was eligible for that. So next year, I'm going to predict at least one person who only got a critic's choice. I love Barbie. I would not nominate American Pie. 
<laughs> I would not nominate her either. I think she's good. I I don't necessarily see why she would need a nomination. I I will say I remember when I saw the movie a second time. I remember thinking like, okay, that I could kind of see it. I could kind of see it happening. I did wonder in the back of my mind. Like, I was like, huh, I wonder if Nicole Oldman nominated him. And I go, huh, probably not. But I, when she missed SAG, I was like, oh. Her uh, missing SAG from Penelope Gon- Cruz. Gonskis. Felt really weird. <laughs> Gonskis. Uh, I did not predict Penelope Cruz because Lone SAG is a terrible uh, track record. So Penelope Cruz getting literally only but- SAG is very odd. <laughs> Only BAFTA is also not great either because I and I did uh, Sandra Huller in the sort of interest. Um, I which we probably should have guessed that probably wasn't gonna happen. Yeah. But like, and even after seeing the movie, it's like, yeah, she's she's very good, but like it's it's definitely not a performance that screams Oscars. Yeah, um, I should have gone with Jodie Foster. Well, I did, I did go. With, I did go with Jodie Foster. I just I didn't. I was her. stubborn. I was stubborn. Well, I was stubborn on this movie. Which I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stop being stubborn with my nomination. Um, um the movie. This lineup is, is kind of like not great. I'm gonna be honest. The movie's not I... amazing, but let's pour one out for Tarja P. Henson. <laughs> I would have nominated her if I had to. I. Uh... Like the movie's I not mean, great. I, I, I think Daniel funny. Brooks deserves like, to be my here. Head, like under my head, like it would have been a fine. Like if she'd gone nominated, like I wouldn't have, wouldn't have complained. I feel good. I think Daniel Brooks deserves to be here. I think Dave Andre Randolph deserves to be here. The rest of these people, eh. Like I I'm still don't get now. the I'm Emily Blunt Oppenheimer I'm thing. Humbled. I really, I really think I it's to, just because like it's, she's part of the movie and she's like you know I need to rewatch. Never been nominated before. It was I guess it was just her time. America Ferrera, I guess it's just like a fun addition to the movie and like the monologue, I guess, is like what what got the nomination. Like, let's be real, it was the monologue that got her in the nomination. I mean, I feel like an Emily Blunt and America Ferrera. Jodie Foster, famous... are just like, are, 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 are you kidding me? We, we are not serious people. The Academy is not serious people. I mean, like, I feel like an Emily Blunt and America Ferrera, the same as Jolene K. Brown, of like, I'm really happy they are now Oscar nominees. Yeah, but like. Maybe not for those roles, but like. I'm happy that they are now Oscar nominees. It, it it's just it's just weird. Like they would never do this. But like you could nominate Sakura Ando for shoplift not shoplifters. I keep getting these two movies confused. Monster. You could nominate Sakura Ando for Monster. You could nominate um Rachel McAdams for There Got to Be Margaret. You, mm-hmm. you could have nominated Julianne Moore for May December. Uh Paul uh, um, Paul Labier for Affire. Like, there's a lot of great. Oh, like Penelope Cruz. Oh. The, the, the branch clearly likes her. And it's fucking nominated. He's great well, in Ferrari. Here's the thing about. The... <laughs> Ferrari is not parallel mothers. Oh, I know. But, like, she's great in the movie and she deserves to be. And, like, I don't know. Just because she's surprised for parallel mothers, it doesn't mean she's going to surprise for Ferrari. With I parallel know, mothers, I mean, she nominated. had. She won two trifectas, she won the Volpe Cup. Ferrari blanked at Venice. It blanked at the trifecta. It just it's like it, it should have been nominated. She's, she's very good. I, I haven't seen the movie, so I couldn't tell you. But I don't um, know if you'll like it, but though she's very good or not. I mean, I I just list like a bunch of women who could have been in uh, Sakura Anto, Rachel McAdams, Julianne Moore, Paula Beer. Like you could, or Paula Beer, you could argue she's lead, but. Other three, I think you could easily like. Actually, eh, who cares about lead versus supporting? Like, you could nominate any any four of those women, and, and they would make a much better lineup than Emily Blunt, America Ferrera, and Jodie Foster. Coming back in to say that I forgot to mention Claire Foy. I'm not trying to disrespect America Ferrera, Emily Blunt, or, or Jodie Foster. I like they're they they they're probably all nice people. It's just that like. Their performances really don't need to be here. At least Divine Joy Randolph is sweeping. Yeah. Like, she's probably the best in this category with this lineup. <laughs> but, like, ugh, my God. I, and I, I would take a double cooler over, <laughs> over, um, over this. I mean, yeah. <laughs> 
uh, yeah. It, I feel very similar to this year's lineup as I did last year's lineup. Where last year, it was really just Kerry Condon and Stephanie Shu that like actually. Oh yeah, like, last year belonged, was I think I think last year was a, there. Last year was a war. But then you had like Hong Chow, who's very good, but the movie sucked. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis is just like, why? Why are you there? And Angela Bassett is like, this is the performance that like she's supposed to win her Oscar for. Are you kidding me? Like that's it. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. Uh, it it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but at least we don't have Jamie Lee Curtis, I guess. We're getting on to the fun category, the not, the not fun category now. Oh, well, keeping in the order of gender, I guess we're going with actor. Uh, do you have any more comments on supporting actress before we move on? Uh, congratulations, Divine Jerry Randolph, on your Oscar. Yeah, g- congratulations, Davon. Best actor. Bradley Cooper in my show, Coleman Domingo in Rustin, Paul Giamatti in The Holdovers, Kelly Murphy in Oppenheimer, Jeffrey Wright in American Fiction. So... Uh, this is one where I need to also, again, take an L. Uh, I said Leonardo DiCaprio would be Michelle Williams. That didn't turn out right. And Coleman Domingo got in, and another yeah, lesson learned. Know. At least one category every year is going to go sag five for five. Well, uh, I'm only likely. being my one actor who got everything in this, but it ended up being another actor who got everything in this. So... Oh, boy. That's next. <laughs> uh... Um... Rest is the only movie I've seen in this category. This category is this category is good. Um, I don't love Bradley Cooper as much as everyone else, but I'm fine with everyone else. Um, yeah. I don't know who's winning, but see, Shrugs. yeah, the Critics' Choice thing. Shrugs. <laughs> I've had some time to think about it. I I can, like I I get the Paul Giamatti thing, to the extent that it's like. Yeah, I can see people, like, really, like, watching that and being like, you know, Paul Giamatti is someone that we've respected for a long time. We know him. He's kind of, you know, like Killy Murphy, a very humble actor who, mm-hmm. you know, just like, he, he, you know, he, he doesn't, like, ask for it. And it's a one of his best performances. Like, I think we can, like, give him the award for the holdovers. <clears throat> but... I then go back to the idea of, well, because I, I mean, I can envision, like, Michelle Yeoh gets up, gets up on the stage, she says, and the Oscar goes to Paul Giamatti, and then he gets up and he gets a standing ovation. But at the same time, I, I go back to the idea, if Oppenheimer is truly going to dominate the season, I was going to say, like, if it went to I, seven, I think eight, it is really difficult for me to see that movie winning. Hypothetically speaking, picture, director, supporting actor, cinematography, editing, sound, and score at a bare minimum, and Killian Murphy not coming along. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It to would me. be weird. I don't know. We'll see what happens at SAG. Because I think Killian's going to win the BAFTA. Yeah. Well, SAG lasts this year again. So. Yeah. In SAG, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I believe Giamatti momentum as much as the others, just because it's like, it almost feels like something the Critics' Choice did deliberately to shake up the race. And I don't know. Um, I will say, though, the Holdovers Hall at BAFTA did make me think that Paul Giamatti is possible. Yeah, but at the, the same time... done very well this season. Yeah. But at the same time, Murphy is Irish, and like he he's no he's loved over there. Like if if he somehow lost BAFTA, that he would be cooked because that would be proof. Like okay, the industry is not responding to this performance as much as we thought they would, yeah. even just, even regardless of the film. Uh, so if he lost BAFTA, I would definitely switch to Giamatti. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I just, I'll wait for second draft. I have Murphy right now. Yeah, it's I also have Murphy. I just find it very difficult to think that he would not come along with the yeah. sweep. All right. On to the fun category. Uh, not so fun for me. I, oh my god. 
best actress. I Okay. They literally said this first name when they were announcing the nominees and I went fuck. I'm going to unleash holy hell on this first name. Annette Benning in Nyad. Awful nomination. Literally the worst nominee in this category in a long time. And listen, I didn't like Nicole Kidman being the Ricardos. I thought she was not good. But compared to Annette Benning and Nia, she's like um, I fucking Annette Benning was Elizabeth least... Taylor and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Oh I think my she's god. My least favorite acting nomination. Of like Oh, easily. Of the whole year, easily. Yeah, I think she's I do not think like, she's gonna deny it at all. Razzy worthy <laughs> performance. Do not anyway. think she's good at all. Anyway. Moving on from moving on from that. Louis Gladstone, Killers of the Flower Moon, Sandra Huller and Anatomy of a Fall, Carrie Mulligan and Maestro, Emma Stone and Poor Things. Oh, no. So, before we get on to this whole, uh, to, to, to the elephant in the room, I want to um, mention some things. Uh, Sandra Huller is the first German-born actress to receive a nomination for Best Actress since 1937. Oh my god. When Louise <laughs> Reiner won for The Good Earth. But that is also the film uh, where she did Yellow Face. I was gonna so, say, that one um, is very divisive. Very, very glad that Sandra Huller is now here to represent uh, Germany. Um, <laughs> to represent Germany uh, as a Best Actress nominee after that. Uh, I think that's a very big uh, makeup there. And, uh, you know, as someone who is of German descent, I can say uh, Deutschland. I think, however, that fact is, it is kind of ironic considering that Carrie Mulligan is here for playing a white Latina. Uh, granted, she is white. So, uh, I mean, I'm not crazy about about that, but I guess if the family is okay with it and clear where they are, and, like, even her family was okay with it, because apparently Carrie went to Chile and talked to the family. So, if they're okay with it, then I guess I can't really say anything about it. I don't think it's good in my show. I don't think it's, like... She she it. is very good in the movie. Very good in it. I don't think it's, like... But, like, I mean, for Carrie Mulligan, it's, like... it. She can give that performance with... With, uh... Two of her brain cells. <laughs> Forget the rest of them. She can give it with two of her brain cells, and it's still going to be really good. Um, I mean, like, I think it's my least favorite of her acting. Of her nominees, yeah. Like, is it better than her performance in The Great Gatsby? I mean, to be fair, the bar's not that high, but... Um, <laughs> like, when I'm, like, an education... F- funny thing, that I then. defended her performance in The Great Gatsby. I don't think it's amazing, but... I don't think it's, like, that great, but I don't think she's terrible. No, I think of, like, an um, education and, like, promising young woman, I think, like... Yeah, those nominees are better. Like, are better. I mean, again, it's also, like, it's not as good as Wildlife. <laughs> it's not as good as Shame, you know? Um, I I don't know. I don't hate that she's here, but, like, I'm also, like, not really I, crazy about the nomination. Yeah, I you could do better. Um... To be honest, she's kind of lucky Annette Benning is here because if Annette Benning were not here and someone else were her, she would probably be my least favorite of these nominees. Um, oh, the blasphemy. <laughs> so yeah, she got her ass saved. Between Emma Stone and Lily Gladstone, I kind of like actor, I think it's going to come down to SAG. Well, I mean, obviously, that one's all, yeah. Like... That, that being said, though, like I think it is I mean... really, really... It, it, it's not great the fact that Lily Gladstone did not get back. Because I was going to say, like, it has to be down to the green side because Lily Gladstone does the nominees. So. Yeah, but, like, it's kind of strange. Like, I know Jessica Chastain won without a BAFTA nomination, but also none of the actress nominees that year were nominated at BAFTA. So I don't know if that's, like, a fair comparison. I was going to say, that was I a really think... weird year for actress. Yeah. So... I mean, I'm, I'm not going to dismiss the idea that Lily Gladstone can win. Because that's 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 stupid. But she when, really needs to win SAG if she's yeah, gonna do it, really? and she can. But... I think she could too. Anchor speeches have been really good. Yeah, I think the thing though is 
it might just be a case where it's a supporting performance. A lot of people think it's a supporting performance. It's a very subtle performance in lead actress. And sometimes maybe a narrative just isn't enough. And they look at Emma Stone and Emma Stone is like doing a lot. And it's mm-hmm. a performance that actors love. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Emma Stone is just too powerful to overcome this year. I have Emma Stone right now. I, I do as well. And I hope she wins. That's that I think she is the most deserving here. And this is a case where like I'd be happy I would genuinely be really happy with either one. I think they're both very deserving. Yeah. Um I think it could go either way. Now, there's a world where Lily Gladstone wins like SAG, Emma Stone wins BAFTA, and then we just gotta throw a dart. Now I do wanna ask you this though, because I saw some people entertaining this. I'm not really sure that i believe it (laughs) (laughs) what do you think of the possibility of sandra huller winning at bafta and then that that plus the anatomy momentum pushes her to upset at the oscars i i i I agree i i I think if that's gonna happen it would i mean obviously we require huller to win the bafta but I think it would also require like someone who is not Lily Gladstone or Emma Stone winning SAG. Yeah, like no, I don't know. If, I don't know Preferably, if it, that would need to be Margot because God, if Margot won, oh my God, that'd be... like I, I guess it's not that impossible. Like if that happened and Sandra won BAFTA, I'd be like, okay. Yeah, I guess like, I <laughs> there might like there, <laughs> there might be a case there. Um, well, I think as of ring now, I don't see it. I don't really see it. I think... I don't know. I feel like... When Anatomy won screenplay at the Golden Globes and it won International, it was like... And Sandra didn't win. It was like... That's that's kind of like... That'd be kind of weird for that to happen and then for her to go on to win at the Oscars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Th- then again, mm-hmm. like, Anthony Hopkins happened over Chadwick Boseman, so, like, you, you just never know what, what they'll do. You never know what kind of tomfoolery they'll pull. Yeah, uh, no. I don't know if I'd buy that, <laughs> like, right now. I think, like, like, not to, like, obviously discount her performance. I think, like, if she won, I would wonder if, like, Lily and, like, Emma would, like, vote split. Not that vote split, obviously, is, like, super common, but, like... But Lily and Emma don't give similar performances at all. I know, like... They don't uh, even give some performances to 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 Sandra Huller either. Like, I mean, I guess that's something about these nominees. They're all very different performances. So I don't yeah, know. Good I, job. I, 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 guess. Know, I don't know if I would buy like a Sandra Huller. Yeah, um, I don't really, I don't really buy it either. I think it's, it I think need, it's kind of. It would of need a very weird. specific set of circumstances. Now, <laughs> like if Sandra won BAFTA and Emma Stone won SAG, I would still go with Emma Stone. Now, one last thing I, I do want to mention before we get to the the, the big thing. Uh... I, I gotta take this back to Annette Benning for a second because there's another lesson learned here and that is the fact that whenever possible there's just always going to be a veteran. Someone who is over 50, who's been in the industry for a long time they have a lot of friends and they look at the contenders and they say this person's my friend, I've known them for a long time, I've liked them for a long time, I want to see them succeed, I'm going to put them in. And... That's happened with Annette Benning. And look, I, I was getting ready to say for the early predictions next year, you know, Jessica Lange, Long Day's Journey Tonight, a lot, a lot of people are predicting that, but like, I don't know, the movie is like, not doesn't have a great distributor, we haven't heard shit about it. It, it, it seems like it's... Might not be all that like impressive, blah blah blah. I don't, I don't know. She doesn't need to be nominated. After this, though, and after I said, and after a lot of us, including myself, said about that Benning, yeah, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Jessica Lang is in. Jessica <laughs> Lang is in. She's in. I'm just gonna assume she's in. So, Maybe we need to also exist. We've heard and that. um, <laughs> yeah, um. Every year, I got, you got to predict someone who's over the age of fifty and has had <laughs> a lot of nominations. A lot, uh, I, I I say over the age of fifty. It sounds like condescending. I'm I'm not. It's just like I say this about Ned Benning, but Ned Benning's performance is just absolutely dog shit. Oh, especially has enough nominations. She would have been fine without this one. It's like 
They she didn't nominate like, her for 20th has, Century Women. She they didn't nominate her for this. Like, what the hell? She has, like, four nominations other than this one. She was perfectly fine without this. What about, like, they didn't nominate her for 20th Century Women, which is actually a great performance. And they nominate her for this, like, Academy. What the fuck are you on? What kind of fentanyl are you on? Like, this is insane. This anyway. is actually why I'm more upset about Margo not getting nominated over, like, Greta not getting nominated. Because, like, Greta missed well, for, like, Justin Trier and Jonathan Blazer. Margot Robbie missed for Annette Benning. Well, Which is depressing. I guess this is a good segue into the Margot Robbie snub. Oh, my God. And I guess also the Greta Gerwig oh, snub, which... God. I, like... I guess... The, I guess... I'm, we can tackle both of these at the same time, I guess. Oh, so I, I'll go ahead and read the nominees for directing because this is kind of going to bleed over into that. Uh, we have uh, Jonathan Glazer for The Zone of Interest, Yorgos Lanthimos for Poor Things, Christopher Nolan for Oppenheimer, Martin Scorsese for Killers of the Flower Moon, and Justine Trudeau for Anatomy of a Fall. The discourse behind this is driving Look, me bonkers. I muted Barbie on Twitter because it was driving me bonkers. I'm glad I'm not on Twitter. <laughs> It but is then again, me bonkers. I'm so I, tired I saw a lot of the disc- the discourse through through you know the Oscar expert uh, Phil Ball Discord servers. I saw uh, it was insufferable. It insufferable. Reddit. <laughs> I saw it on Threads. Yeah, it was insufferable. Like, <laughs> a lot of insane. Uh, okay. The hi- freaking Hillary Clinton stepping in <laughs> and t- and tweeting hashtag Hillary Barbie. Clearly hasn't gotten the memo. Still hasn't gotten the memo that nobody likes her. <laughs> and speaking of which, that one guy who who said something to the effect of Greta, Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie being stopped is proves to me why we're not in the eighth year of Hillary Clinton's presidency. I need to apologize because I need a rant, and it's going to be a political rant. Bear with me. I have to do this. First and foremost, if that reality were real, we would be marching straight into a Tucker Carlson presidency next year, or a Donald Trump Jr. presidency, or a Ted Cruz presidency, because Hillary Clinton is exactly why we got Donald Trump. And, like, Hillary Clinton and a lot of the people who unironically love her, the only people in the world who unironically love her are establishment Democrat types. They still unironically believe that she lost because she's a woman. And, look, can you argue that sexism played something of a role in Hillary Clinton's loss? Sure. There definitely are some people who voted for Trump because of the bigotry and because of the fact that they didn't want a woman to be president. Sure. I I can concede that. But Hillary Clinton is super corrupt, super unlikable. She refused the campaign in Wisconsin, which was a state she absolutely needed to win if she was going to win the election. She lost Wisconsin. She uh, campaigned on maintaining the Obama legacy, which was failing a lot of people, and a lot of people knew that. And, you know, she was for these trade deals that people didn't like. She was for the Iraq war. She was for a lot of our very hawkish foreign policy in the Middle East, which is very unpopular in the United States. And Donald Trump, even though Donald Trump, I agree, is a con man, a charlatan, an empty suit. He... D- d- does not believe in anything, and he did much. He was, and he is worse than Hillary Clinton. I agree, but he did not win because sexism. He he campaigned on ending the wars, ending the trade deals, ending the corruption. He attacked Hillary Clinton nonstop for for the corruption, for the wars, and for the trade deals. And all she could do was say, "Well, Donald Trump is sexist. Donald Trump says mean mean things," which yes, is true. But it doesn't resonate with people because people are like, I want you to do something for me. And so when they saw that Hillary Clinton was promising nothing except platitudes and cliches and Donald Trump was giving policy, even though that policy was fake, they said, you know what, I'm just going to vote for Donald Trump. Two times Obama voters in the Rust Belt said, I'm voting for Donald Trump, and that's what gave him the election. It's people like Hillary Clinton that won Donald Trump the election, not sexism. And the fact that people connect these two things... With Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie being snubbed, even if I'm kind of doing it right now, it just, it, it's so brain dead to me. I don't understand that one, it's just, ah, uh, ah. Uh. 
that's the end of that rant. I'm just... It makes absolutely no sense. I don't know enough about kind of American politics to try themselves. Uh, yeah, that, that's why I told everyone to bear with me. <laughs> but yeah, like, I mean, here's the thing. You can be upset about Greta and Margo being snubbed. That's fine. I mean, we all, everyone gets upset about snubs before. Like, I, want, I wish Greta Lee was nominated for Best Actress. I really do. I wish um, Charles Melton was nominated for May December. We were talking about it just just a little bit ago. Uh, you know, I was talking earlier. Zone of Interest should have been nominated for cinematography and production design and uh, a bunch of these other a bunch of these other categories. And like, you know, it, it's it's okay to get upset about someone missing a nomination, someone missing like not winning, right? Mm-hmm. But like. People have taken this discourse out of proportion. Um, I, I don't know. The LA Times writer who said oh something God. to the effect of, like, well, maybe Barbie should have, like, barely survived a, a genocide uh, for something. It's like, you're, you're making light of Native American genocide. If you said that about... If someone said that... Put in that context, but instead of Native American genocide, it's like barely surviving the Holocaust. Everyone would be like, "Like you, you would probably be like, wait, what the fuck? That that's really fucked up. Why would you say that? You didn't think to not say that that wouldn't be fucked up. Are you kidding me? It just is like, it's it's so reductive too. Because she also said something effective. Well, maybe Barbie should have been a sex worker, or maybe Barbie should have been pushed oh, up by yeah. Ken, by Ken up top of the dream house. It's like. It's really a reductive conversation to, like, okay, it, it, it's almost implying that, like, to be nominated, you have to, like, be killed or be accused of murder or have sex on screen. And it's like, that, it, it, no, you don't have to do all that stuff. But, like, it, and I feel like it's just reductive to... Well, sometimes just shame swimming. these sometimes other women. Just swimming is enough, apparently. Or just swimming, yes, indeed. <laughs> or, like, and that's another thing too. They didn't say like maybe Barry should have swam from Cuba to Florida, or maybe she maybe should Barbie, have. Apparently, <laughs> maybe maybe Barbie should have uh, married a closeted gay Ken or something. Like it's it's just like it doesn't make any like. Okay, now that is the Barbie I want. That's the Barbie. It is Barbie so. I want. <laughs> it's the Barbie it, movie I want now. <laughs> it's so reductive to like shame Emma Stone or Louis Gladstone or Sandra Huller. Uh, well, I guess it's not shaming them, but like putting them down for that, especially when like those three are not responsible for taking her out. Like Annette Benning is literally right there, and like because like even if. And that bending were not there. Margaret were there. It it would not have taken out Hooler. It would not have taken out Stone. It would not have taken out Gladstone. I was gonna say. It, I was gonna say. I think like Annette Bening very obviously got in over her. Yeah. Very very obviously. It's just like this is another point that a lot of people made. Lou Gladstone is the first American Indigenous woman nominated here. Jalisa Aparicio was a Mexican Indigenous woman who was nominated. Um. So technically. Gladstone is not the first indigenous person, but she's the first American indigenous person to be nominated. Like, that's something you can celebrate. I mentioned earlier Sandra Huller being the first German-born actress since the 30s to be nominated, and it's for a performance that is not doing yellow face. Um, <laughs> like, there's other things to be nominated for. If anything, I feel like you should be more upset about Greta Lee missing because Greta Lee is a woman of color, and we know how hard it is for Asian women to get in this category, even still after Michelle Yeoh won last year. Like, Michelle Yeoh is still one of only two Asian women to be nominated for Best Actress. Greta Lee could have been the third, right? So, or, or and, and even beyond Greta Lee, like, snubbing Fantasia Barino, a black woman. Like, it's hard for 
it's sometimes hard for black women to get in this category as well. Like, this category, we say every year, is unfair to women of color. And it is. Like, so, like, why are we, one, not celebrating Lily Gladstone getting in with her great achievement, but two, like, being upset about Ned Benning getting in and taking out Greta Lee or Fantasia Barino instead of taking out Margot? It's because, like, I guess it's because Margot is Robbie. Or, yeah. Marco is Robbie. <laughs> it's late. Uh, Margo is Barbie. And is it weird that the Barbie movie is nominated and, and the woman playing Barbie isn't? Yeah, it's a little weird. Does that mean it's, like, something you should, like, make a big stink about, though? Not really. Again, the whole, like, Hill, like this is why we aren't in the eighth year of Hillary Clinton's presidency tweet. Like, just shut the fuck up, man. Seriously, like... What what even is the point anymore? The Greta Gerwig sub and director. I, I mean, with these two, like... I mean, again, I'm more upset about the Margot Robbie thing because she was very clearly taken out by a net thing. Yeah. Which is a much worse like, nomination. Here, and here's the thing about Barbie and director, too. The director's branch of the Academy. They don't like blockbusters. They don't like blockbusters. They don't like... Well, well, they specifically don't like populist blockbusters. No. and. You know, again, I do, I need to distinguish between popular and populist because Opp- Oppenheimer is a popular film, but it's not a populist film, in my opinion. Barbie very much is a populist film. Dune was populist. Top Gun Maverick was populist. Avatar was populist. You know, it goes back to freaking Jaws, right? Blockbusters that are made to be populist, to appeal to the public, that the director's branch just said, eh, fuck off. And they, they go for their Pavel Pavlikovskis, their Rizke Hamaguchis, their Thomas Vinnerbergs, their Ruben Uslins, and this year, Jonathan Glazer and Justine Trier, which I'm going to get to those later because I, I do want to <laughs> want to flex. But, it, like, you, you just have to understand that, like, a movie like Barbie, even if it wasn't Greta Gerwig directed, it was Noah Baumbach instead. I still think it would have been snubbed. Because it's just the type of movie that the director's branch of the Academy does not like. They, they, they stick their noses up to it. And, you could, and I know someone's going to say, what about everything ever all at once? That is not a studio movie. It still has the feel of an indie film, like a scrappy you know, movie that was made on a low budget... Even if it doesn't look like it was made on a low budget, its budget was, like, as low as $14 million. That is not a lot of money to make a movie. And that's something that clearly impressed the director's branch of the Academy. And so that's how the Daniels were able to still get in, even with a blockbuster-adjacent film. And and, and also, like, I kind of just want to say, like, you know, people like you and me, we do this for fun. We don't really have, like, as many stakes in it. Yeah. I'm not saying award shows aren't important at all, because to, ex- to an extent they are, but in the grand scheme of things, they aren't, like, that meaningful. Like, movies will live on without award shows. Some movies that, you know, win big awards w- won't be all that remembered. It doesn't matter in the end. The King's Speech. The correct response. There you go. There you who go. Remem- the King's Speech. Who remembers that but movie? For some reason, a lot of, um, you know, white liberals, and by liberal, I do not mean anyone who's even remotely left wing. Like, I, I mean someone who's just like, you know, establishment Democrat type. Somebody like that, they think these things are everything. Like, when, like when it comes to like, with 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 liberals, it's like. These things mean everything, and they're part of the culture. And with the right, it's like these things are too cult- or too woke. There's no in-between between them. And, you know, for people like us, it's just like... Who cares? And there's still a big myth out there that the Oscars are, are supposed to be for the most popular movies. Not only is that not true, that's never been true. That's never been their stated message to nominate the most popular movies. Because if that were true, 
you would get movies like Super Mario Brothers movie and The Avengers and these big like blockbustery films that get nominated every year and that just doesn't happen it's kind of like um the inverse of when criterion put out wally and Mm. a lot of people were like oh my god you guys are only supposed to put out indie foreign obscure movies but that was never criterion's stated message their stated message was always important classic contemporary films that did not specify obscure or indie or whatever. Like, Criterion could do the Avengers if they wanted to. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't be a contradiction of their message. Uh, I don't think they're going to. I think it would be really funny. But... <laughs> it would be know, really funny. Yeah, it's kind of the inverse of that. I, now I saw I want, some now, now that needs to happen. That needs to happen for oh, the Lord. film girls to be angry. We'll be angry. We'll be really well, funny. and... And now that I've seen a lot of non filled people talk about this, and they make this interesting point to all these people. If you're upset about Margaret Robbie and Greta Gerwig not being nominated, who would you take out? Now, for a lot of film people and a lot of Oscars people, uh, we, get, we, we, can, we can answer that question. For actress, I mean, I think you and I both agree, and most of the film Twitter would critically agree, take out Annette Benning. <laughs> for director, that's a different conversation. Uh, I would take out a Martin Scorsese. Um, I think. If anyone, mm, I actually don't know. Um, yeah, I would. I would. I, I would take out Martin Scorsese. I think. Sorry, Martin Scorsese. We can say this, but like these other people, like, how much money do you want to bet that Hillary Clinton is watching that movie fall? How much do you want to bet, Jasmine? I, you know what? We need her to watch an enemy of a fall and to make it commit the exact same tweet about uh, my little kind oh of uh, trainer getting some help. <laughs> Hillary anatomy. Uh, oh my god. Um, I mean, the lineup is still really good. I think the lineup is like, yeah. it's, it's like an incredible uh, yeah. lineup. It's probably one I of mean, like, I, I'm just saying, like, you know, people like Hillary Clinton or people like, you know, those, those, uh, MSNBC types. Um, who would you take out? Who would you take out? Because I bet you they haven't seen Anatomy of a Fall. They likely haven't seen Poor Things. Maybe they've seen Killers. Um, maybe they've seen Maestro. But, like, you know, they, they probably haven't seen The Zone of Interest. I, I mean, to be that, fair, a lot, I mean, to be fair, to be fair, a lot, a lot of people, people haven't seen it. A lot of people yeah, haven't that, seen The Zone of Interest. That's that, <laughs> that that definitely a fair point. But, like, just saying <laughs> just saying anyway i'm kind of done talking about this whole um barbie thing i really <laughs> i really i, I really want to gloat about best director because i got this category five for five. Oh, i went uh three for five three for five what um i had pain pain and uh i oh i, oh, I had a gerwig you did the DJ five. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Look, I was in denial, and I really wanted Critical Rook to get nominated. I had been predicting her all year. You know what? Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I hope we get to a point at some point where we can have. Well, I mean, I know what happened back in like twenty twenty, but like it's happened like once. It needs to happen again. We need to have multiple nominees. See, this like, this. Actress nominees. I got. I, I hate to bring We're back into the whole hate to bring myself back into this whole thing but like if you're going to be upset about Greta Gerwig not being nominated because it's like why does there only have to be one woman like I, I can get behind that I mean, because Lane Song in, I wouldn't nominate her first one but Lane Song in. they yeah. have proven that they can nominate two women before granted it was in a COVID year I mean granted but it was once proven... also granted it was once and, and, and it was just once but they've proven that they are capable of doing it like on that basis, yeah, I can get behind that. Um, that being said, this is, I think, one of the best lineups for this category. And uh, yeah. honestly, maybe ever. This is really like a fantastic lineup. Yeah, I would like I would like a day where all of in like five hundred years when all of the nominees are also women. also 
What's the lesson, guys? What's the lesson? If there's a European director in contention and they win European Film Awards, they're in. This is exactly why I predicted Justine Trier. Because like, the thing is, I didn't feel good about having Alexander Payne out. I really didn't. But I would have felt even worse taking out either Jonathan Glazer or Yorgos Lanthimos. I just decided I was just going to go with Payne out and Trier in. And hold my nose, hope I get at least four out of five, and I ended up getting five out of five. I I really think, looking at it from a, from a certain perspective, it's like a lot of people thought Trier would be Edward Barger. I never believed it. Not for a second, because you don't win the Palme d'Or if you're not an auteur. In, certain, in some respect. And I don't think you could call Edward Barker an auteur. No. Justine Trier, sure, maybe she's not all that well known. Maybe her films before this weren't all that acclaimed. But you can, but you can definitely say she's an auteur, and that's kind of, and that that is ultimately what got her in. I think over. Uh, Greta Gerwig, obviously, but also Alexander Payne, over Celine Song, over Bradley Cooper. And I was right. European Film Awards really did make a difference here. Because, I mean, even though Jonathan Glazer also obviously got in, the fact that Trier beat him at European Film Awards, like, that definitely meant something. My gut was telling me before nominations 2020, Thomas Vinterberg. Thomas Vinterberg is going to be nominated for uh, another round. And I stupidly went against that and um did um uh Darius Martyr instead. What Darius Martyr? Yeah I did. <laughs> and then Thomas Vinnerberg got in and I was just like stupid. So I'm like, you know what? This time I'm gonna go with my gut. And and, and I mean another thing too that led to this like after l- last year the days leading up to the Oscars like I was telling me, Jamie Lee Curse is gonna win. 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 I ignored it. I predicted Kerry Condon. That Jamie Lee Curse won, and I, I remember right in the moment I said, "Never again am I going against my gut. Never again am I going against my gut." Now I I did not follow that rule. <laughs> to be clear, <laughs> I did not follow that rule because Bobby won. But this, with this specific one, I was like, I need to stick to my gut. I can't go against my gut on this one. And I ended up being right. <laughs> it, pay, it paid off. So <laughs> I'm forever going to flex about getting five out of five in this category. <sighs> yeah. I hope we get to a point in like 500 years and like the 500, like 95 Oscars where we have all female nominees. I think. We'll get there in like 500 years. And um, on that note, I would like to mention Trier, I think, is the second of eight women. You can count them on two hands, but it's still a very small number. The second woman out of all the eight to be nominated for a director for an international film. Uh, the first was the first woman to be nominated for director, actually. Uh, Lena Vertmuller for Seven Beauties. So, that's cool. We've talked so much about this category. I think we need to just move on to to to, to picture. I'd love to never talk about Best Picture again. Congratulations, Christopher Nolan. Yeah, Nolan's winning. Yeah, uh, Best Picture. <laughs> uh, the PGA 10, American Fiction, Anatomy of the Fall, Barbie, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, Poor Things in the Zone of Interest. I, I know we were all scared about the PGA 10. As I said on the predictions episode, it just ended up being like 2019. Like, there was just nothing. Like, we just we just kind of felt like, yeah, this is going to be those nine movies that we got. It was like, yeah, this is probably going to be the nine we get. Nothing's weak enough to fall out. Nothing's strong enough to come up in. So, you know, regardless of the Francis Fisher origin push or the supposed Saltburn surge and the final days of voting, of voting or the, uh, you know, the attempts to get color purple in there. He attempts to get air in there. 
or May December. It it didn't work, and we just got the same ten movies as PGA. First time in a very long time, a PGA and Oscars match up completely. Yeah, so, there's just kind of nothing else. And I, I mean, all, I mean, all, all the more for it because I mean, now having seen all these films, it's a good. I think it's a good. Just one. it's the best lineup since 1975, maybe. Uh, you know, the one where we had One Flew Over Cuckoo's Nest in Nashville. Barry Lyndon, Dog Day Afternoon, and uh, Jaws. Like, it's going to be very hard to top that lineup. But this lineup, I mean, j- just take off my show and replace it with, like, All the Strangers or May December. And, like, that might be on par with that lineup. It really might. Yeah, I love seeing, like, my show at the bottom of everyone's ranking list. Because <laughs> it's just so easily, like, like the one that people agree. But most people agree it's like the most mid. Yeah. We're just like, eh. Eh. It's really Who fun. Cares? Um this is the most uh women directed films in the best picture lineup with three. Sad. So depressing. And uh, only one of them got best director. <laughs> which you could also gonna... say is sad. Again, one day we will have five female director nominees. One day. In like 50 years. Um, This is also the highest concentration of primarily not English language nominees, with also with three. Although, to be fair, only two of these are actually international films. And that's another thing, too. This is the first time two international films have been nominated for Best Picture and in the same year. And the first time both the Palme d'Or and Grand Prix winners at Cannes were nominated for Best Picture in the same year. I'm trying to think of something of, of other cool things that happened. Uh, you know, it's very interesting the films that, <laughs> that got nominated for, for for Best Picture because only it feels like only the Academy Awards would do in the same lineup a movie about Barbie dolls. That's literally a, like a, a like you could say a commercial for Barbie, and also a film. About the Holocaust, that's looking, that's <laughs> holding a mirror up to everybody and saying you're the problem, <laughs> as well as a, uh, you know, a bunch of other um, <laughs> movies. It's uh, very ironic. It, yeah, and, it's very uh, academy. And uh, there are also worth mentioning two nominees where one of the actors in the film is also nominated for Best Picture because Margot Robbie, of course, was nominated for Barbie. So she did get a nomination. <laughs> and uh, Emma Stone was nominated for Poor Things. I am second uh, actress to do that behind uh, Francis McDormand, I believe. Well, to get both. Yeah, so. Oh, and, and Maestro also, too, because Bradley Cooper. Yeah, Martin think... Scorsese could have been double nominated, but he was not credited mm-hmm. for Maestro. Although Steven Spielberg was. I'm trying Maybe? to think what... What other cool stuff about picture are there? Is there? The Anatomy, The Holdovers, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things all have picture, director, editing, and screenplay. So that's probably our top four. Well, Holdovers does not have director. No, uh, but it does have the combo of the other ones. Yeah. And it's definitely top four. So. And then Killers was probably. Yeah. With Oppenheimer, it's like it's probably just so far out ahead that there's not really a strong enough number yeah. two. Or like not a consensus one. Like you, could, like you could probably make a case for poor things. You can make a case for anatomy of a fall. You can make a case for. I guess you can make a case for the holdovers. I don't. I mean, one thing that's interesting: the director of the movie is not nominated anywhere for it in any category. Alexander Payne is not nominated in any category for it, at director or picture. And you know, he didn't write the movie, so he wasn't going to get nominated for that. But you know, and for him to miss best director. When he won two screenplay Oscars and has been nominated three times, is I, I I'd say it's more concerning than most movies for that film's chances of potentially winning Best Picture. But yeah, um, this is a really um strong top ten. Uh, yeah, they actually did a very good job with this, and they are not going to be as generous next year. I can oh, feel yeah. it. There's like nothing coming out. Because of the strikes, yeah. Um, I've had a bad feeling that there's going to be like an extremely, like, incredibly close level bad nominee next year. 
Thought. I don't know. I don't know if that will that will turn out to be the case. But I, I have a feeling that that's going to happen. And we're all going to be like, oh my god, how could they do this? Yeah, we're all going to be really freaking sad about it. Yeah. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Hopefully this year just has like, some good, good nominees, hopefully. Just don't... Mm-hmm. Well, anyway. Um... <laughs> That 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 that's it. We got through all of them. Um, Only took three hours. Um, we're gonna talk about. Uh, I I wanted to individual uh, episodes on each of the nominees. Um. Uh, hopefully very soon. Uh, talk about their place within the awards conversation, and you know, talk about um. You know, of course, the films themselves. What else could they have gotten or should have gotten? Blah blah blah. And uh, yeah, well, um, I mean, that conversation doesn't go very far with Oppenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, literally nothing else that could have gone. Yeah, I mean, we'll just uh, we'll talk to you guys uh, soon, and uh, yeah, uh, like the uh, podcast and uh, rate us and do all the lovely things. This is going to be on Spotify soon. I'm just looking for a good uh, artist to commission a artwork for. So it's going to be very interesting. Very fun. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's, that's it, everybody. Um, peace out. Good night, everyone. <laughs>